Tony in the past couple of meetings. I, I watched them uh, on YouTube, and I thought you did a great job. Oh, thank you. So thank you for doing that, my answer. All right, next, uh, we'll approve the minutes. Minutes of August 1st, 2022. Make a motion we approve I have a motion from Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? I'd like to add something. I, I said Bob wasn't here because he was on a trip, and I'd like to add that it was a business, a working trip. Yeah. And the um, select board concerns. I also had a request, Eric, that it's hard to hear you when you're speaking, so maybe we can get a mic. I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I will mean, speak up. That's right there. Okay. Thank you. It won't happen again. <laughs> okay, is there any other changes or additions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I will abstain as I was in the meeting. Uh, I would like to um, I'd like to address the group the meeting uh, just for a minute. I'd like to um, try to hold the meetings in more of an orderly fashion. Um, in the past, you know, I've been on for a long time, and I always try to let people talk when they want to have something to say. And um, a lot of times, these when that happens, things get out of control because people just tend to speak up and say whatever they think in the meeting. And sometimes that can go off into a tangent. And um, I'm really going to try to uh, adhere more to Robert's rules and how meetings are supposed to be run. And so I appreciate it. If anybody wanted to needs to speak, to please raise your hand and I'll call on you and you can step up to the microphone and please introduce yourself. Um, that's when we're going through the agenda. We're talking about any particular agenda items. If you're here for community concerns, it's going to be the same way. I know the group has talked about it a couple of times, but I just want to have things run more orderly because sometimes things can get out of control. And now that we have a lot more people coming to meetings, I think that's a great thing. And the best way for everyone to get a chance to speak and say what they think is to run it as uh, orderly as we can. So I'd appreciate that. Um, and, and then please don't uh, just blurt things out as we're going through. Um, the other thing is, please don't speak to someone else in the, in the audience, or it, it, if you have any input, please direct it toward the board. Um, so I just wanted to, wanted to mention that before we go any further. All right, do we have any liquor control, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Do I hear a motion to go into liquor control? So, so moved. Second. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Judy. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in the Board of Liquor Control. The Morristown Historical Society and the Noise House Museum have submitted um, a museum permit for August 20th. Okay. Is there anyone here to talk about that or no? I can speak here if you want. It's just a, uh, a membership mixer. So you got the okay. Jason, you have any issue with that? No, I'll tell you, just answer my question. I was curious what the event was. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, you got a dozen people to show up. We'll okay. So right. it's a membership mixer. Yes. Okay. I'm just saying it so people can hear it on the recording. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Make a motion we approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion regarding this? So this is just for members to be there to drink? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't get a lot of attendance at the museum, Brian, so if members of the public want to come, they're surely welcome. Well, they might now. <laughs> uh, trying to lure them. Okay. That's kind of the point. <laughs> All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Is that all we have, Sarah? Yes. Thank you, motion we adjourn. Okay. Uh, second. Motion to come out. Uh, second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now back in the regular select board meeting. Mm -hmm. Next, new business. Uh, discuss former gas station property with new owner Tim Bryant. Well, this is about, I can turn this over to Todd rather quickly here, uh, discussing some possible um, 
from the Brown right Main Street. But Mr. Bryant uh, is, was the uh, purchaser of the, the former Snowfall gas station here on Main Street. And he's really just weighing all options. He's, he's just looking to see what possibilities uh, may come from uh, the property itself and the possible development of that. And of course, the board has in the past talked about the desire for perhaps different, uh, some, some variety of different things, not the least of which would be a realignment of Congress Street such that we had a true four way intersection uh, instead of the left link or right link or kind of going across the street thing. Um, and whatever else may come up. Mr. Bryant is here. Is he here right? He's going to join via Zoom in about 10 minutes. Okay. If he can make it, that's his plan. I talked about 10 minutes ago. So, this is my really rough sketch of what a realigned intersection may look like. And for me, as the planning person in the room, it's kind of a once in a generation opportunity to actually create a true four way intersection before the property is developed. Uh, there's a couple of nodes you guys want to pass them around. Uh, so, what that shows is taking Congress Street where it ends right before. Right here at the Walgreens, veering left, cutting through the existing parking lot by the gas station, and teeing it up with Congress Street to create a proper intersection. Uh, as the community grows, intersection functions now. It doesn't function that well. If you stand out there for 20 minutes, you'll see at least someone yelling at someone, shaking their fist, maybe a, a, a gesture or two. I don't really know. Uh, so the intersection doesn't function well now. As the community grows, it will continue to function even more poorly in the future, especially with more people here who uh, haven't navigating as much as often as we do. So uh, before we build a building in the middle of the intersection, foreclose on the opportunity, there's an opportunity for the select board to work with the developer and try to figure out a way to uh, bring the road through the middle and instead of one development site, create two development sites. This is advantageous uh, pros and cons for both the town and the, the property owner. Uh, for the property owner itself, he wants to see what his options are. I think he'll join us shortly. For him- oh, I just him jumped out. in. Oh, thanks Tim, how are you? For him, yeah, real. Good. For him, it's actually easier to develop one flat square lot. So in many ways, by doing this re relocating the roadway, we're degrading the property for him. But the one benefit he has, uh, it's a gas station. Gas stations come with covenants. They don't want people, uh, residential use on it, people growing food in the, on the property. Not that that would happen there, but there's a covenant on it that doesn't allow residential use. So if you did split the lot this into two, even though it's two funky shapes, he could develop a building on the existing right of way of Congress Street, and he swaps that with the town, so we realign the road, and then there's the other adjacent parcel, which uh, Mr. Bryan or the town will talk about how to develop. I don't think, I'll turn it over to Tim. I don't think he has any in concrete development plans as we speak. He's just trying to weigh his options right now. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. We don't have any solid plans. Um, you know, I, I could definitely see the benefit to straightening out that intersection. Um, certainly not opposed to hearing what that what that could turn into um, just given the size of the lot it's a little bit tough to tell without a real plan if we're going to be taking a lot and turning it into two lots that are you know too small to use um, and i just don't have a real clear picture if we were to straighten that road out you know what what the width of the road would be exactly what the setbacks are how much room i would have um, especially on the cumberland farm side to, to actually do anything. So um, certainly not opposed to, to looking at a plan. Just want to make sure it, would, it wouldn't be ruining both lots. And that's what you have tonight. You have proposals from Tyler Romley, uh, Becky Gilson. Uh, Tyler is Tyler's the engineer here, obviously, and he would be the one who's looking at what a new road, how that would look like, better than my chicken scratch sketch that I gave you. I don't have the uh, CAT software that Tyler has to draw what it would look like. So that would give Tim a little more feel good to keep moving forward with splitting his lot into two instead of one. Uh, I just want to make sure we knock on this door and see what's there before we say, thanks, we're not going to contribute and you can develop a lot as you wish and we miss the, miss the, the chance to realign the intersection. I mean, this is probably a 50, 60 year chance we have right now. Is there a benefit from 
the standpoint of accidents? Or given the way it's configured right now, is it more prone to accidents? I would assume so. But has it been? To the police chief. Jason? We've had a couple there, but I mean, there's worse intersections in town. So, but there has been a serious pedestrian accident there and a couple minor ones, but there's worse in town. So it's a proposal that the town would be responsible for reconfiguring the road? No, I don't think so. I think we have to start to figure what it would look like, and then you can talk, you can develop into some sort of agreement with Mr. Ryan about who sharing costs and, and whatnot. The, uh, the survey costs, for example, uh, the town's going to survey its own right of way. Uh, you can talk to Mr. Ryan, he may be willing to share some of the survey costs for the property he purchased. Uh, so it's a conversation you need to have with the developer. I don't have the ability to make that kind of deal that you guys do with the developer. So that's up to you guys to discuss. Okay, so I'm, I'm certainly willing to participate in the cost. Um, you know, there is a survey, uh, Todd, that I think you sent me. And um, I've, I've gone out and found just about every marker there. So I, I think in terms of the existing lot, um, the survey would be quick and easy, and I would I'd be willing to participate in the rest of the survey in uh, of Congress Street. Mr. Bryan, it's Bob Beeman. Uh, do you have any ideas for what you might use the lot for that you're willing to share with us, both um, with the lot change so the intersection was configured um, the way it should be, or the way it is right now? I don't, and I'm not holding any cards. I, I, we really don't know what we're going to do with it. It, um, it. it seemed like an interesting lot to us, uh, given its location. Um, if it was to be split, obviously there's. It, it's attractive to see that there could be residential zoning on one side um, and commercial on the other. Uh, but no, we really don't know what we're going to do with it at this point. We'd like to do something, obviously, that would be, be good from an investment standpoint, but then also good for the town, given the location. Okay. Is there any other questions for Mr. Bryan? Um, for Mr. Bryan. Um, sorry, you're saying that possibly one lot would be commercial and one lot would be residential, but again, you don't have any concrete plans. Well, no, I'm just saying from a zoning standpoint right now, there's a lot of deed restrictions on the existing lot. Um, so certainly if, if it was to be split and then suddenly we had more options with, with less, um, less restrictions on one side of the road, that would just open up our options more. Um, the only way to do housing there right now is to realign the intersection. So the land itself has covenants that no residential used to be put on it because it was a gas station. That's when gas stations go out, they don't allow redevelopment in residential. They also put restrictions on a certain commercial uses that would uh, conflict with their gas station uses elsewhere, even though Global Montella doesn't have a gas station elsewhere in town. So having the residential piece is important to a developer to make them make the money work in a monthly cash flow kind of thing. So having that section of Congress Street to Mr. Bryan, where there are no deed restrictions, it's a town right of way if he chose to do the land swap with him is beneficial to him, but it's also beneficial to us because we get a properly functioning intersection. So there's a there's there's a positive to both sides. <clears throat> and has there been um, formalized, like you're saying, <clears throat> like I think you were getting at it too. Um, have there been, or I'm sorry, Don was getting at it. Have there been formalized studies around um, realign, like why we would realign that? and not put in, you know, a roundabout, or if we're really concerned about the intersection. The uh, roundabout wouldn't fit without taking property right. from people. You need a willing property owner. You have a willing property over here. I mean, is the, there, the well, intersection would function better as a four-way intersection with a rear alignment versus right. the now. Like and that's skewed. based on what evidence? Based on... Uh, Just... Just watching. Yeah, comments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say comments. From a planning yeah. perspective, you yeah. want your roads to line yeah. up. So you would, you want your driver to clearly yeah. have a site with the driver across from you so you can understand what you're both doing. Right. You don't have that now. I guess I'm also getting at, you know, have we had studies to see what would happen if we just put in a <clears throat> a three-way, um, you know, a, a, a proper, you know, red, um, red, orange, and green light? I don't think you can afford a traffic light. No. No, you, this would be a four-way stop for the foreseeable future, yeah. just like it is now. Okay. Traffic lights alone will cost you $100,000, $10 million, never mind the annual, someone's got to program it, 
and that's not in my job description. That would probably the person would fall on. So uh, it's not outside of my bailiwick. So uh, the traffic light at Hannaford's, I think, was uh, north of $750,000, and that was in 2013 dollars. You're going to pay a million dollars for traffic light. Even the state's not doing traffic lights. That's why they're doing roundabouts. Roundabouts, A, are cheaper. Um, go to the same maintenance you know, to upgrade the light system, and they're safer. Uh, right, but we don't have enough space. Don't have space for yeah. We can talk about a roundabout the intersection, probably 12 and 15A. If you'd like, I talk, I'll, I'll love to talk about that one, but not here. It doesn't work here. Um, okay, and so we're also, what are you asking for us? Um, there are proposals in there. The three um, to to choose one of these bids or to take it and no, study it more? No, there is a, um, there are three things in front of you, and if you're going to start discussion with Mr. Bryan, you don't have to make a decision tonight, but um, maybe, I don't, maybe you want to, I don't know, that's up to Eric. You have a proposal for Topo, the survey would be a Topo, one foot Topo. And, so, who, and whose is that? That's Becky Bilson. Okay. Uh, she does most of the survey work in town. And you have Tyler Mumley to do a site plan. You also have Becky for a survey. Maybe you want Becky to do the Topo and you don't need an updated survey since Tim found all the pins. That'll be up for you guys to discuss. I don't have the ability to have this discussion with Tim. I can't spend money. So this is a select board discussion to have with the developer if you're interested in fixing the intersection. If you don't want to fix the intersection, you move to the next agenda item and move on. I think it's worth taking a look at, you know, what's the possible possibility, you know, maybe it's something that wouldn't be worth it once we've figured it out, but spend a little money if it's not too much to try to figure out what the possibilities could be to make it better, then it'd be worth it. Do we have money to, to uh, do do the preliminaries? We do under other contracted services, yes. And what is the total? Is that uh, Tyler Mumley's engineering for conceptual site design and cost estimation for the project is twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the Guild survey area is uh, sixteen hundred and fifty. Yeah, there's two for the survey. You have to choose one of the two. Well, one think, or the other. Well, I don't, well, you can use both, but I don't think you, unless Tim wants one. I'm not sure if you've got you've got an existing survey of the property. Tim's found the pin. It sounds like you may be able to save some money on survey costs and just have to do the topo. Tyler's bid depends on the topo. So you got to do the topo from Becky to use Tyler. But you don't have to have Becky resurvey if you don't want to, uh, since it's an existing survey. That's up to. Up well, the, the existing survey is for the gas station property only. It doesn't include the Congress Street. Correct. You, just have Becky, lines are... you could have Becky just do Congress Street and then save money. My point is if you don't want to do the whole thing, you can just do the whole thing and have the gas station resurvey, which Tim will help with, it sounds like. Street so these two dollar figures here are either or. If you're going to know it's both. They're two separate bids. One for Topo. What's yeah. Topo? To Topographic. Oh, yes. That's like that. Okay. So it's about four thousand dollars, roughly, give or take. Four or five, yes. Um, wait. So, well, Tyler's is twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. And there's two for Becky. And the first one is their topographical, which um, adds up to. 750 plus 900, is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's correct. So between four and five thousand. Sixteen. So Becky's is 1650. And the other one, the more elaborate plan, is uh, 3800. And that is survey That's plus surveying. topographical. Yes. I don't think the town needs to resurvey the lot, given it's got an existing survey on the land records here. Uh, if Tim wanted to help pay for the survey, we should, we should survey Congress Street, I think. We need to know where the right of way is for Congress Street. Uh, but if we don't, I don't think we as taxpayers need to survey the lot since it's got an existing survey. If Tim wants to chip in for that, I mean, Tim can do that if he'd like, but that would be my recommendation. It looks to me the way this road is cutting in, you're actually cutting across right, right aid's property Correct. too. That's okay too. Um, I, Louis Ferris was the first buyer of this. Louis backed out the last minute. Louis was okay with the with this same transaction relocating the road. Louis is going to be okay with the right end thing here. Mm -hmm. Louis will talk to Mr. Bryan separately to try to get a access off the road for a drive through for the pharmacy. Right. So he can deal with that with Mr. Ferris privately. Yeah. Well, that'll be a, a zoning question, though. Correct. Yeah, yeah, we need a permit for that as well. Right. Yeah. And that would be a contingent. Is that a, um, a common thing to have a drive through in the downtown? Uh, we do allow them in the downtown. We allow yeah. them conditionally. We go to the DRV. Mm. We have downtown one, we have one now. Only. Union Bank. Of course. Yeah. 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 Well, we had a site walk a while back, and that's what Louis expressed to us that yeah. they would really like to have. You know. yeah. I think Ryan Tyler is probably going to fit the road 
conceptual design is going to make. He's going to fit completely on Mr. Bryan's property. He won't be crossing lines unless he's instructed to do so by us. So mm -hmm. we'd have to have something from Louis to, in order to make that happen. Yeah. Correct. We're down the road here. Yeah. yeah, that's a different ship for a different day. Yeah. So if you want to, if, if you're inclined to do so, I would encourage a motion for separately, one for the engineering fees. And then the second one, if you wanted to, if we can get uh, on the larger option here, the larger dollar off thirty nine dollars, if there's a possibility for her to do that to the survey, just the commentary portion. Yeah, and that dollar amount go down. Yes, and if, if Mr. Bryan wants to uh, Mr. Bryan wants to have her survey the resurvey the lot, we can do that as well. I, I need these I need someone to write out like on that board what these numbers are so Mumley is Mumley is offering um, a site plan for twenty five hundred dollars does that include a survey no he's just no. an engineer he's a site plan it's just engineering and it's a conceptual site design it won't be completely accurate he's simply going to he's going to put it in a drawing a more formalized drawing that he does on a computer and then he's going to add to that cost estimation for that work to be done. It'll be a conceptual design of the four-way intersection. Correct. Correct. And we'll have dollar figures to know what it would actually cost to do this. And we could say after spending $2,500, well, glad we didn't do this. It's too expensive. Or we say, wow, this is a better deal than we thought. We should move forward with this. And Mr. Right. Brian wants to move forward with it. Because ultimately, there's a lot of considerations here. There's there's electrical, yeah, there's, utilities, there's water, there's water, water and sewer. And sewer. Underground. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're looking. It, assuming we went with that proposal, $2,500 just to come up with a concept of what that four-way intersection would look like. Correct. But not, that proposal would not tell us what the total cost of creating. No, I believe it would be with a cost estimate. It's going to say moving water and sewer lines, pavement, it's going to be an engineering cost estimate. So it's going to give us... Is that your understanding, Eric? Right? Yes. Yes, okay. So for $2,500, we could find out what it would cost to re to really do this. Well, it says it's the below services are based on the, an assumed project scope that includes utilizing a completed to topographic survey by Gibson. Yes, yeah, so we need to. Need so to we need to do both. Of, of that needs to be tiles. You need to do the topo, otherwise, if you're not going to do the topo, we don't do tile. And the topo is the sixteen fifty. I believe so. Yes. Okay. What's everyone want to do? I think we ought to leave it alone. First leave the of, intersection alone? What's that? Leave the intersection alone? People have done that for ever since I've lived in more so. And one thing, changing things like that could cause more problems than it would the way it's going. For having cars now, they stop and look around, where if they're straight on, they might, oh, nobody there. And then just that's... put that money, at least at this time, first of all, we don't even know for sure how much he wants for it or anything. I, I hate to see dumping money into something, especially this year with the prices of fuel for our, everything we have going on. And I just, our gravel, we had to buy this year again. We, I just think it. every time we keep adding more and more of this, if we can stop it for now to check things out a little bit better. I, I agree with Jess here, the prices here are kind of confusing and what we're getting for that money. I'm in, I'm in favor of having it studied because yeah. I know that there's, there's a lot of times going through there, people don't pay attention to, to how the, the traffic is supposed to be moving, and especially we have a lot more residents moving into the community who haven't lived here for a while, and you get a lot of tourists coming in. So I think spending the money with an engineering uh, design, or not a design, but a engineering study, a minimal study, and then um, probably not the topographical. We don't need the topographical. We need the topographical. Those, go, those are a piece of the Okay, problem. so, and then the other the other one we don't need. The other one, just to, we would need the survey of Congress Street. We don't need the survey of the full property. If Mr. Bryan wants to pay the rest of that, he could. Right, so that. There is a survey on file. It's old, but there's a survey on file. So, um, boundary survey is the one we don't need. We, we don't need it other than a piece of Congress Street. We okay. have to ask Patrick Price that separately if you use more. Okay, so just our first, the first proposal in our packet is the one we'd be looking at. Yeah, if you, approve, if you would approve the first two, 
that will allow the fact finding. We can go back to Becky, have her split out the Congress Street versus the boundary. And Tim, do you want to pay? If are you willing to say you'll pay for the survey of your lot if the town pays for the survey of Congress Street? Yeah, and I was thinking about it. you know I, I found almost everything there, but I didn't find everything. Um, if, if we're going to go through this, I think we should go ahead and, and get mine up to date, get an up to date survey, okay. and I'd be willing to pay for that. So Tim um, is going to pay for ninety percent of that survey cost. The, Mark is probably ten percent of it. I don't can't bring the other it the other thing I could the other thing I would add is you know from my perspective. All the all the engineering, uh, what happens to the sewer and water, that could all be figured out later. Um, so, you know, if, if you wanted to just address whether or not I want to do this, um, I just kind of need to know how much space are we going to have? You know, how would it be zoned? Um, what are the setbacks going to be? I just need to see if I'd end up with useful land or not. So you might be able to save some of the money on the engineering portion of it and just do it one step at a time. Maybe it's better to do it all at once. That would be up to you. But from my perspective, you know, assuming that the sewer and all that's going to get moved, we wouldn't need to do all that now for me to make my decision. He wants to see if he's going to give the town a right of way. Uh, he'll give a tax benefit for giving the town a right of way. He wants to make sure there's something buildable left to something usable left to build on where the town right away used to be when he gets back. It's yeah, it looks like he's cutting almost half of his. Exactly, I mean, Mr. Bryant's making his property worse by doing this, but he does have the benefit of doing residential, which we need uh, on the Congress Street footprint right now. So there are pros to him. Yeah, he gets two smaller and less buildable lots, but he wants to make sure the main lot is the, uh, the smaller lot he's in the Congress Street that doesn't have restrictions. He wants to make sure it's buildable. And really Tyler's, in, Tyler's survey uh, engineering sketch plan is going to tell them what's going on. So the, you're saying the smaller lot that, that would be um, created by um, by swapping this right of way Correct. would be the existing be Congress Street because that didn't have a, a, a gas station on it. Correct. So there wouldn't be brownfield restrictions. Correct. And you're, and you're likely the larger lot that's remaining, uh, the town could talk about purchasing for open space, parking, green space, whatever you wanted to do. Or Mr. Bryant could do a commercial building there as well. but. You can't do residential in that larger piece after the road rewinding is done. So there is a possibility that this lot two labeled this lot labeled number two could be green space. This is your way to get it if you phone us tonight. Well, <laughs> yep. if we we could go to the town to ask for correct. Yes. Right. You have to come to a price for Mr. Bryant. Mr. Bryant, right. I don't think he knows what he he wants to do until he sees what Tyler comes back with, but. If you, we re the road and he agrees to build on the smaller residual lot where the right of way is now, and he gets a building out of that, maybe he'd be willing to sell the other lot to the town for the green space and the parking and the park. Wait, sorry. Park. So can you can you name? So what are you calling this smaller lot? Uh, let's call it lot two. This the this the lot two that's labeled on the sheet. Oh yeah, lot two. Yes. Okay. And lot one is going to be where Congress. Lot one is the. Uh, what do I have on my label? Sorry. There's no label on that one. That's lot one. Oh, this is lot one. Oh, this is one, sorry. Oh, that's okay. And this okay. would be the new lot, so we call that lot two that's created there. Okay. By my math, that lot two would be about 6,500 square feet in size. And that's where he could potentially build, build a, a building, residence. Yes. Build, a, build something with residential. Commercial on the ground floor, residential, upper right. floors. And lot, and lot one would potentially be something that he couldn't use. He could use commercially. But he can't use residential. Right, because of the brownfields. Yes, so that's the one maybe if he got a building on the Congress Street right of way, maybe wanted to sell that one to someone else. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, they're going to lose two parking places right there if that road goes where you've got to drive. They're, they're aware of that. Okay. Mr. Ferris is happy to swap those for the potential for a drive through for right head. Okay. There are a lot and of uh, here. A lot of the sidewalk's are still going to stay in that? Sidewalks would have to be part of both sides of the road. The ones yes. that are there, yes. Well, the ones that are there would go because the sidewalk on Congress Street's full side would become under a building if this goes forward. But there'd be new sidewalks put along the new road that realigns on Portland Street. So you'd be able to cross that street much easier as a pedestrian. I cross the street every day, it's not easier to cross. Oh, I see you at crosswalks right there, too. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> what do you think, Jeff? Um, I mean, I think $4,150 is what um but do we so do we have a how much will it be once um we've shared the cost do you know if the 
you were talking about the development of the site, or? No, with this first phase. The survey. The survey. You talked about a 90-10 split. Oh, oh uh, 90-10, okay. You'd have to work that out with Mr. Ryan. Okay. I assume you'd want to pay for. Yeah, this is, the, this is the first I'm seeing these numbers, and I'm, I'm having a little yeah. bit of difficulty putting them all together, but. Um, yeah, you know, me too. <laughs> I, I guess in theory, um, I, I'm, I'm happy to share the cost of, of the survey. Um, in, in terms of all the engineering and whatnot, and I guess I'd, I'd want to just be able to look at that. But I'd ask Becky to break the survey cost based on our time, based on your lot versus the Congress Street lot, and what the percentage breakdown works to be. So, so if we, be if we 10, 80, 20, I'm not sure. It's going to be what the deed research shows. I mean, that's a more time intensive thing. How far okay. to find the information on Congress Street? versus tracking the chain of title on the property line. I couldn't tell you that's a survey of the um, I'm sorry to beat a dead horse, but uh, so basically we have three numbers here. We have the Mumley site plan, um, which is $2,500. And the Gibson topographical yep. plan, which is 1650. Those come together. So we have to do those together, so that's 4150. Yep. And then we also have a survey. Survey, which Mr. Prime would paying for the lion's share of, depending on the time she puts into it. And that is a total of 3,800. Correct. Okay. The survey itself is 3,800? Yeah. Um, deed research, 1,000. Reconnaissance, boundary measurement, 1,500. Analysis, calculations, 500. And drafting, uh, 800. It's a good price for a survey. So I think I'd like to see us put this off to the next meeting, bring us back the figures and the percentages on, in writing. I don't think you'll get any more than that, Brian. You're not going to know the breakdown of that survey until Becky actually does the deed research and it depends on her time. How hard is the deed to research back the gas station lot versus the Congress route right away? Uh, no one can give you those numbers ahead of time. They just did. So we're looking at a total of 7950 you're looking closer, I would think. What's your first number? You get 4,400? 4,150. You're probably going to pay $4,500, is my guess. Yes. Tim is going to be responsible for most of that survey cost. Because most of that land is under the gas station parking lot and not the town right away. Oh, okay. What's the order in which this would be done? Survey be done first? Uh, survey would be done first, and then title as the plan, yes. Oh, so you're saying 90, 10, 10 being the town's share of the survey? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Okay. It depends on. It depends. I mean, a big part of doing a survey work is not actually putting the pins on the ground. It's doing all the, the deed, re, deed research, yeah. mm -hmm. tracking everything. Who's who? I mean, it could be really easy to do the Congress route right away. It might take 20 minutes. There might be bad records from 1847. It could take 20 hours. We're not going to know until she does it. Mm -hmm. I'll pick up the 3,800 for the survey, and if, if, if the other portion, the engineering portion is a necessary first step, and, and you want to pick up the 4,150 for that, I think I'm hearing these numbers right. Yep. I'll pick up the 3,800 for all the survey. Okay. So, Tim, this is Don McDowell talking. Um, if you do the survey, is that going to, for you, answer? Because for me, it just seems like there's a lot of unanswered questions right now. I'm just trying to sort through this. We're not even certain what's, what the development would be. We've been told what it could be, but we're not, we don't really know what it, what it might be or what it will be. Uh, but once a survey is done, is that going to answer a lot of questions for you? I, as long as it includes, um, you know, information like, you know, how close can a building be to the sidewalk, things like that. And I think a lot of those things are answered and probably in the zoning rules already. But yes, it will. What I'm trying to do is establish if it's actually going to be a reasonable size lot, um, you know, or if we choose to put a structure there, is there room to move? You know, are we going to be able to set up a ladder? <laughs> or is it going to be so tight that it's not a usable space? And I, and when I look at it right now, um, I just I can't do all those measurements. So, you know, before we start planning, um, whether it be on one larger lot or on two smaller ones, uh, before we before we start really brewing our ideas, it would just be nice to know what that option actually is. I get the concept, but I until we measure it out and I actually see the usable space, it's hard to, hard to decide if that would be a usable lot or if it would just be a chunk of ground we'd never be able to figure out what to do with. 
Because I'm kind of leaning in the direction of Brian right now and thinking that if you could do the survey and and start answering a lot of these questions, I mean, I don't think the board is negative on this idea. There's just uh, just too many unanswered questions right now, especially for me to to start encumbering town money in this project. Um, but if you could do the survey and come back at a future meeting and let us know what those lines are and what the possibilities are, because right now we're just, it sounds like we're just kind of guessing at what some of the possibilities are. The survey is different than the, the site, the engineering site plan, Don. I, I, I you're know, right. Sure. He needs the engineering site plan to make decisions, not the survey. You're talking okay. about the survey, you said the survey, but what he needs is the engineering site plan to show what the road would look like to see what he's left. And we're making the ask here, we're asking a developer with a nice square lot to cut into two not very buildable shapes so we can fix our intersection and, give him, and him to give us a right of way. We, if we want to go down this road, we need to help him a little bit. Well, if we don't have yeah. to we don't have to. We're also helping out by offering a buildable lot because the, Correct. That right of way is not it's a brownfield. Only field. reason he's on the line right now. Yes, <laughs> I don't <laughs> want it. It's not one-sided. Otherwise, he would say, uh, "Yes, yeah, no, yeah no thanks." Two. Yeah. thanks, but no thanks yeah. because it's two not really functional lots after you're done putting the road in the middle of it. Yes. Well, by him, I agree with Don now that it, by him going through and doing this, he'll know whether he wants to sell it or not. He may look at it and say, "Oh, oh I have nothing left." So I don't want to cut it in half. So. He, may, he may look at what Tyler's uh, comes up with and say, you know what, both these lots aren't really usable. I don't want to get the town a right away. I'm just going to develop a lot as is. Yeah. And that's that's okay. That's, it's his property. He just paid three hundred plus thousand dollars for it. That's an okay result too. For us, I want to make sure we had this conversation before we passed off the opportunity of generations to fix this intersection. This is our one and only chance, probably 60, 70, maybe years or later, to try to do this. If we don't want to do it. That's okay, but at least we had talked about it publicly. So we so can <clears throat> go back to the earlier question. I guess I don't know for sure the difference between the survey and the site plan in terms of what information I'm going to get. Um, so my inclination is that a survey would tell me how much space I have, but it's possible that I would. It's possible the whole site plan needs to be developed so that we would know where street lights are and sidewalks and all that. I, I guess that that would be. In my opinion, the, needs to see the road. I know I, if I was in Mr. Brian's shoes, I wouldn't make a decision on this until I saw what the road what it was going to look like and what it was left with. So what you're proposing, Don, was that we just wait until the survey comes back. But what we're hearing now is that we need the survey, the Thank site you. plan, and the topo to really come up with okay, an informed the site, decision. The site plan. And the site plan is based on the topo. Site, yeah, site plan on the topo. It's, if you pay for the site plan on the topo, Mr. Yeah. Ryan's going to pay for the survey, which so, includes right. the surveying the town road. So we're looking at 4150. Correct. Not the 3800? No. Because Tim said he would pick so that. He's paying up, up 3800. He's going to be surveying the town property. So it would have been over 7000. <laughs> but it's not. No. It would have been. Yeah. Yes. Well, I just think that it, it looks terrible right now. I'd like to see something yeah. done with it. I also like this. See what's possible, you know. If we spend yeah. 2,500 bucks to look at our part and maybe the 4,100, I think it's worth it. You know, we don't know what it might be. We know what it won't be if we don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, but it may sit like that for a long, long time. And I just think I come down every morning and look at that and go, "This is terrible." <laughs> yeah. You know, it's terrible to see in town. Yeah. And I just like to look beyond. You know what? What's possible? Mm -hmm. You know. That's just my opinion. Mr. Bryant, is it safe to say something will happen with this property? Um, well, yeah, for sure. I guess the, the only thing I can offer is that the existing building uh, doesn't fit into any idea that we've had. Um, so we will likely be demoing that building uh, very soon. Um, but, but again, it would be nice to know sort of what the, at least what the layout is, if we're going to have two lots or one before we move forward with that. And then of course, I, you know, if, if the road was gonna be moved, uh, it might make sense to do all that demo work and the road at the same time. It, you know, I just have no idea what kind of timeline the town would be on, if this is something that can move fast and we'd be doing it this year. If it's not, if, if the town's not gonna be able to move on anything uh, quickly, 
then uh, I have intentions of at least demoing that building and cleaning that lot up, even if it was just to be an empty lot until we know what we're doing with it. Um, I would like to see the eyesore go away as well, especially now that my name's on it. Yeah, I agree, Bob. I'd like to see that eyesore go. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we all see it when we come into town. Does it we don't do something, we're going to see that that way for a while. And the 4150 is going to come from where? The 4150 comes from Tina. Other contracted services. Sorry. I was reading a note here that's been uh, typed in by Mr. Ring. That there, it's a uh, building has pre existing status and new must meet current setbacks, etc. Be careful about the business. We, that was discussed earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do we want them? Do we make a mo Do you need a motion? a motion? If you're going to approve any expenditures, yes, you need a motion. I make a motion. We accept. I don't. Uh, let me know if this is correct. Um, I'll defer to Mr. Tyler <laughs> to our Robert Roberts Rules guy. Um, the Monthly Engineering um, Project. Twenty five hundred dollars. Does that cover it? Yeah, and you need a topo in this. I thought I thought you wanted us you want them together or separate? Oh, yeah, 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 we do separate. I would do them separate. separate. Yeah. Okay. Well, I second the motion. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Jess. But for further the, discussion. The two expenditures need to go together. Correct. You will, if you don't approve the first one and go down the second one, that would make the this would be a good point. So, so they do have to go together. And vice versa. They, don't have, they can be separate motions, but if right. you're gonna approve the first one, you really gotta approve the second one. Tyler's, Tyler's site plan says it depends on yes. these topos. So maybe you should motion back his topo first. Okay. I withdraw my um, original motion. Sorry. Original motion. Make a motion. We accept Becky Gilson's topo procedure at sixteen fifty. Okay. One thousand six hundred fifty dollars. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? A second. A second by Jess. Any further discussion? So that's going to give us a topographic map of this. Gives your grades. Uh, that that prepares it for development at some point, including, including the road. Yes. But not the survey that. Mr. Bryant would do afterwards. Dropping the road on right. top of the topo and showing where the, how the road can go, what the curb of the drill looks like, where the sidewalks would be. That allows Mr. Bryant to see what do I what do I have left? Is it worth giving the town the right away, or is, do I punt here and say I'm being left with two crummy lots and this isn't worth it for me? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Motion is passed. Four to one. Now you have another motion. Um, um, make a motion. We accept the um, Mumley Engineering Incorporated's bid to. This is a bid. Yeah. On um, for twenty five hundred dollars for a site plan. I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Don. Any further discussion with this? Um, I'm just just to double check. Um, has there been due diligence around the um, the brownfields? Mitigation and the rules, um, either the rules from the state and all of the um, contingencies that the um, the seller put out there, um, so that we we do know that we could actually put a road in there, and we you can always cable over brownfield site. You I can would, right. I would defer to Mr. Uh, Mr. Bryan on right. what his environmental turned up when he bought the property. I know they pulled the tanks. I know they did soil soil tests were there. I mean that's not public information, so I don't know everything that happened there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we did due diligence to the point that we were comfortable purchasing the property in terms of, um, you know, if you were going to be taking ownership of that portion of it, then I guess the due diligence would then go to you. Uh, when doing due diligence on a gas station, you can, it never ends. <laughs> so we had to, you know, we, we did uh, as much as we thought we could and, and everything uh, made us comfortable purchasing it in terms of what you would need to put a road through there, I'm not sure. Should, okay. be, should not be complicated to pay over anything. It's a gas station site, which one's pretty easy to know. Right, but if, um, just to play devil's advocate to make sure that we're not putting good money uh, into something that's not gonna work out. Um, like we had at one point maybe talked about burying power lines. I mean, it's, you know, like, is, 
if it's a brownfield, is, is that, does that mean we can dig up the pavement to do something like that? Or does that mean like you just pave over it? You, 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 can, you can dig there. You may have yeah. to. The worst case scenario, in my opinion, and again, I don't crystal ball, uh, the worst case scenario is you have to haul the soils away to Coventry because the soils are considered uh, developed soils and right. soils, so you get a truck and go out of it. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's pretty far down the line here. We need to figure out what's right. blocking what the costs right, right, are right. before we go down there. Right. But yeah, we decided this is something we want to do. Uh, if we're going to retrench water and sewer lines and, and haul soil out of there, it shouldn't be a lot of soil because most of them can go back right in the hole when you're done. Mm -hmm. We may have to carve some soils away. All right, any further discussion on this motion? Yeah, just for the record, I want to say I, I voted for that first motion, and I'll probably vote for this one as well. There's a pit in Burlington, a very big one, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I see occasionally. There's one in Newport that I see way too much. And I hate to think that we have a little mini pit of our own here we in do. Morrisville. <laughs> we do. So I'd like to, to see it go away. I think, yeah, I think you're more likely to have that if you don't actually work towards this. I, yeah. yeah. That's all I need to say. Okay. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Uh, motion is passed, four to one. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Does that uh, help you? That does. Thanks, Tim. I'll we'll email you tomorrow. Do we and I'll, uh, I'll CC Becky and Tyler. Let Becky know you're picking up the cost of the survey bill. Okay, so th there wasn't a motion for the survey. Is that something that now lands on me to, to organize that and get that done? Yes, sir. That's correct. Um, can I can I ask one more question? It's in the chat as well. Um, does that mean the survey documents, the site plan, and the topographical map are all part of the public record, and that we are able to use them? Or of course, yeah, okay. Is public record. Mm -hmm. So okay, uh, the deliverables for the topo and the site plan will be sent to me and Eric, or maybe me or maybe Eric, one of the two of us. But yeah, it's obviously a public document. And then the survey. Results will Tim will share those with us. The survey is now a private record. We, we didn't pay for it. We may not get that survey. We'll cross hmm. that bridge when we get to it. Well, can we talk to Tim about that? Yeah, uh, because I don't know if that gets weird if I'm surveying your property. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mind if, if you can authorize it and get it, get it all done, and I I just put the bill. I, I, it doesn't matter to me how it goes down. I, I'm certainly willing to organize it, but it sounds like it's already been organized by you. Yeah, that's certainly like, you can the survey. That wouldn't be a public document. <coughs> Unless you records it here, records it here, which you may, it's a public document, but it doesn't have to be a public document. It's up to It'd be great working with you on this if we could um, have you share us your ideas if you come up with them. And, um, you know, going forward anyway, once we figure out what we can do. Yeah, I certainly will. Um, it, and, and I'm not, uh, like I said earlier, I'm not holding any cards. Uh, we don't, we don't know what we're doing with it yet, but, um, we're certainly willing to talk and work with the town as we go forward. And from the conversation, Tim, I think it's safe to assume, correct me if I'm wrong, the select board has no issue with, uh, Gilson serving the town right away for Tim if Tim's paying for the survey. No issue there. Yeah. Okay. So you get that. Okay. And if you're willing to share the survey results, like, um, Todd saying and record them with the town. We would you would appreciate that for sure. Yep. If, okay. the, if he does do a multifamily property, is a requirement of zoning any multifamily conversion requires a certain recorded survey. So uh -huh. if we do get three or more housing units on either one of those lots, if we mm -hmm. separate the road or just the existing lot, we'll get a survey at that point. It's part of the zoning rules. So I see there's supposed to be two signatures here, right? Now who's signing them? I think that's Eric. Okay. We should. Do we need to make a motion for that? Or is it just automatic? I won't be assigned on behalf. I was here for the vote and the so. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. You want a, right. you want a motion? Okay. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, All right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. Can I ask a question? Is this the first time that this has been brought before you, board? Um, we've talked about that. We've talked about that site before, multiple times. Multiple times. We, we actually had a site walk with yeah. another potential buyer. Yeah. There, and the possibilities. We yeah. Yeah. We also um, we also um, solicited the um, a, a request for proposals from um, some um, for companies to help us with a vision for that site, but. Um, 
it wasn't approved by the board to accept that um, proposal. So, um, and then it was purchased by a private entity. Tom, go ahead. This may be for later, but this has been very important to me. It's great to see the transparency here. Why can't we, or couldn't we, have done that the same thing with Jersey, Jersey Street and, and Bridge Street, and what may happen on Brooklyn Street? Is have the developer or whoever's going to do something come before you vote, where all of us can hear what's going on and do the same thing that this public just did. Well, this wasn't about zoning; it's about right, you know, away. right away dealing with the town. You know, not dealing with the planning council. That's a separate thing. So he he's not going to have to go with the planning council. Well, he will. It depends what he does. The developer review board with this plan, or me or the developer review, most likely the developer review board with this plan. Yeah. But he needs to figure out if this right away was going to happen or not. If, if he would mean basically, and talking to him, I am asking him to give us a right of way for this yeah. very valuable commercial property he just bought because of some funky lots to see if he can make something work here try to fix the intersection for the town moving forward. So that's the reason it's part of the select board, because the select board controls the roads. So any right of way uh, acquisition or trading, wherever it's going to be, has to go through the select board. The DRB can't do that. Yeah. Right. But the DRB will approve the buildings on that. Right. But it sure would have helped if somebody had come before the select board before they started the Jersey Way, before they started the Bridge Street. So we all got and a little bit of input and so what's going to happen before. I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate what, what yeah, Bob what said. I, this, that, that, what you're talking about is a zoning issue. Yeah. We're not, this, the activity we're doing today is not a zoning issue. But you, but you still have the last word on. Correct. And we have a. Not on development though. We don't. On development sites, the DRB does. So they, there's a separate, there's a separation of power in the state statute. The select board can't approve development projects. Their appointed board does, but there, that's like the there's a division of power there yeah. where the select board can't serve as well. I think, I'm not sure you can serve as DRB members. Can you? No. I don't think you can. No. I don't think it is. Well, 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 yeah. The DRB has its own statutory regulations. The guy over here. Yeah, <laughs> supposed to sit here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, it's a state statute thing. You talk to your state legislator. If you want it, the select board to weigh in on development projects, that's a different state statute pathway than what's there now. Okay. Uh, that helps. Right, there's different ways of structuring our government. And as it is now, it's not structured Correct. that way. Yes. And the select board doesn't chime in on all the decisions the DRB makes. Yeah. It's a separate separate division of power, like like And a lot of people don't realize that. They think we have final say on everything we don't. Yeah. yeah. And the reason yeah. you say though, they can appoint the DRB members and not appoint the DRB. That's where the select board has say. It's in the appointment process. Right. Yeah. The DRB deals with state statute, and that goes above what we are. So we really ought to have those people zoom for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's a good question, Tom. And I, I, I wanted to reiterate, I, I said before, it'd be really helpful if people want to speak or have a comment to please raise your hand and please stand up or at least speak loud and identify yourself. And one of the things, one of the reasons I, I brought this up before is because I've been looking at a lot of the different select board meetings, one's in Essex, one in Jericho, one all over the place. I've been studying up in Johnson and I really want to have these meetings run in a more orderly fashion to have them run better. And the other thing with that is that I watched both of these meetings I missed on YouTube and I had a very hard time hearing people in the, in the gallery who they were and what they were saying. And it's very difficult to watch that online. I don't know if you've ever watched one, but it's it's hard. You don't know who's speaking. You don't even know who's speaking when it's a board member sometimes. And I know these voices. So it's really important, you know, come to the microphone for the folks that are, are watching virtually and identify yourself and then say your, your comment. And remember, only address the board when you make a comment. So thank you. Thanks again. All right, let's do... Uh, Number two, higher highway tech two. <coughs> Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we did the scenarios here a few weeks ago now. And uh, we had a standout candidate, Earl Pion. And we made a provisional offer. 
to him, would he accept it? Back in front of the right, asking you to hire him to get a motion in front of you for that. The role comes to us from 27 years, I think he said, of independent truck ownership. Uh, he drives, has driven a propane truck for Ultramar, uh, how many different names that have gone under over the last Sweet Bert, started to Sweet Bert. Started there. <laughs> Um, and he is he is getting out of that independent truck business with that truck and uh, we're looking for something more stable. So he comes to us uh, having driven 27 years with a little bomb on his back yeah. uh, on snowy roads. So we thought that gave him a good edge with the CDL for plowing when he's done. And, uh, All right. I'll make, I'll make the motion to hire Earl Pino in the highway department as a tech two. September 10th at a rate of 24.86 per hour with a start date of August 22, 2022. I have a motion by Don. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Welcome to Earl Pino. He's a good truck driver, I know that. Yeah, wearing a bomb on your back, that certainly qualifies you to try to dump truck driver. Is he here tonight? He's not. No, he's not. I haven't seen him. <clears throat> All right, number four. Uh, we're crossing off number three. Number four, set the tax rate for... No, we didn't do number three. We didn't. It was crossed off. It was before you came. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not yeah, talking about it. Okay. Okay. Table, table. Tax tables. rate for 22-23. Tina, is that you? Well, Sarah. 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 Okay. You ready, Sarah? I would defer that it was Tina. <laughs> 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 we worked together. <laughs> so. I, I oh, okay. Can you tell the um, There's sorry. There's some people on Zoom who can't get in. Got motions on the bottom. Is it um, is it possible to walk through it briefly, like in a summarizing way, without taking an hour and a half? I mean, well, basically, what you're can you what we're seeing is that there was a decrease from last year to this year. There was a decrease in the education rate mm -hmm. yeah. and an increase in the um, municipal yeah. rate. Is the that projected correct? The increase at town meeting day was 12% for a municipal increase. Yes. We didn't know for sure what it would be because we didn't know the grand list. Yes. It's actually now a 10% because the grand list grew. Right. And so it's better than what was voted on at town meeting. Right. And the education tax rates are completely set by the state. Yes. And um, those both decrease. Those both decrease. The homestead rate um, is negative 0.65 percent and the non-residential is negative 0.19 percent so small decreases but decreases that's a good thing yeah so tina the 10 percent is for the municipal tax rate yes like the 105 to the yes. 95 and the reason the reason that it is so much is because you do have a lot of special articles i mean you have the one cent for the capital equipment fund for the highway and the fire which you've had right along Half a cent for the Norris House Museum, which you've had right along. 
but now you also have a half a cent for the Conservation Commission, which is new. Um, we also have a paving loan for a $500,000 paving note that people approved, and uh, the bridge loan to fix the Walton Road Bridge. So that's another $162,700. So you have many articles that you haven't had in the past, and that's the reason for the 10%. The 162700 is a combination of the paving loan, the $500,000 paving loan payment, which is like one hundred and four, mm -hmm. and the bridge loan, which was 58000 That's what it's budgeted to be at this year for the loan those, payments. Those are the payments. Those are the payments. payments. Of, yeah. Right. No, not, no, not, the, the, not the overall, but right. just the payment for this coming year. That's good to clarify. So for, so, and what we're seeing here is like, for instance, if you own a house that's worth $150,000, your municipal plus education homestead rate would increase $133.35. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. What was that 133? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good way to simplify it. If you look at this one, not this one. Oh, okay. It's this one right here. Yeah. There we go. And that, that 133 is, um, and I forgot to put a disclaimer on here, this is pre um, any state payment. I don't know the percentage. Um, Tracy Wren used to say in school meetings that it was like 75, 80% of Morristown residents qualify for the state to make a portion. Right. So, that, so that is pre the state um, making a payment. Right. Okay. Based on your income. Based on yeah. your income. If this is an aside question, but we're going through a reassessment, and that's not going to be done until what, 2024? Do we know? Next year. Next year. 2023. Yeah. So this tax rate isn't affected by that. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I hear a motion regarding these? And that 133 is per $150,000 valuation. It's for 100. Per 100, yeah. not 100. Okay. Yeah as it's usually quoted. I just wanted to... I was just looking here. at that table yeah. just to say, like, oh, right. what real figure can I look right. at? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I make... So we have these three motions? Yeah, uh, <coughs> um, and you want them all three at once or separately? Yeah, they have to be separate. Okay. I move to set the municipal tax rate of $1... 1 1.0543... <laughs> Is that correct? I'll second. A motion by Jess. Second. I'll second by Brian. Any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next. I move to accept the residential education tax rate of $1.5841. Second. I have a motion by Jess and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. I move to accept the non residential education tax rate of $1.7045. Second. Motion by Jess and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. That wasn't so bad, Sarah. <laughs> Next, number five, discussed Ideal Vermont. Bob, Ideal Vermont is a uh, oh, program, it's a movement, more or less. Um, the acronym itself stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Action, and Leadership. Following on with our adoption of our own uh, statement in the town. Declaration of inclusion. Um, this program, uh, this letter was sent to the chair and it brought to you folks for consideration. Uh, they discussed what ideal uh, goals are moving forward. Uh, it comes, this comes from the State of Vermont Agency of Administration Office of the Secretary. The letter itself was drafted by Susanna Davis. So she's the uh, Executive Director for Racial Equity for the State of Vermont. 
and beyond her letter is a four or five page uh, briefing of what their intentions are uh, moving forward. And I bring it to you as uh, there is a meeting coming up in October 26th. Um, that I think would be beneficial for you to attend on your behalf and the board member one to attend as well. That would be great. Just to hear the presentation, you can see the categories they're looking to uh, to uh, give uh, information on um, access to grant funding, convenings, workshops, convenings and workshops, technical, technical assistance from state agencies, data sharing and coaching online platform resource library, and learning topics will include foundations of racial equity, tourism, MWBEs, which I'm not quite sure what that is just yet, <laughs> housing, health equity, and advised policy, school curriculum, fair and impartial policing, data planning strategy, and environmental justice. So, uh, not needing a motion, I don't believe at this point. I think this is a we need to sign up and go to a meeting to bring back further information. So this is information for you folks. Um, but if somebody wanted to have that the time, they wanted to commit to that day, they go with me to that, and uh, I'll sign us up. So you are going here? I, I, I think it's worth the listen. Yeah. You know, I listen to what they have to say. I, I like to think that Morrisville could stay autonomous enough to make decisions on a package all or nothing type thing. I don't believe that's not what it's presented. I've met Susanna Davis, fantastic speaker, a very intelligent articulate, and uh, this this really is uh, an opportunity, I think, for us just to get more information bring back. So uh, I'm not sure what direction they're going in, but we'll find out on the I don't know if you mentioned it did say in here that member municipalities are eligible to apply for small grants up to ten grand each year. Correct. Yeah, I got the email on it. I'd like to go, but I'm actually going to be in Europe then, so I don't know. I don't know if maybe somebody else wants to go on my behalf. I'd be interested. What day of the week is it? It's probably it's like it's during a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> I, I, if I'm available, I'd like to go, Bob. Or Bob, yeah. Eric. It'd be, it'd be good to go, I think. I would go, Judy, but I'd be served papers the next day. That's my birthday and my wife's birthday. Uh. <laughs> it's not going to work. Well, it would be great if one of the board members could okay. go. Okay. Yeah. 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 And Judy. Yes. Not this Judy with an eye. Uh, not letting things go uh, unanswered. Has looked up the acronym MWBE. What do you find this? Uh, Minority group and women. Oh. Okay. Is that all, all we have on that? Great, thank you. That's a great yeah, opportunity. Thanks, Eric. That's good. All right, we'll move to number six. Discuss the Park Street sidewalk. So I sent out uh, correspondence to all residents on Park Street. As you know, last summer, uh, we took up the sidewalk. You can call it that. It was uh, on the uh, south side of Park Street. And um, Put back in this place, sod it or grass, and you can see it back up. And we were approached by residents at that time uh, asking the board's consideration for putting the sidewalk back up. Uh, I went through uh, several different meetings and discussions uh, through budget and so on, and then uh, it came back to us in the spring. Uh, the question continued. And what we decided, the board decided, was I would send letters out to each of the property owners if we received a, an affirmative response from all of them that they'd be willing to give us uh, an easement on those properties because that was the biggest issue. The sidewalk, as it used to exist, was well outside of the right of the highway. There were too many obstructions that are right away to put a sidewalk in there. We have to go in where the old one was. And uh, so we would need easements for the property owners. I received six emails in return from the property owners uh, that are somewhat almost positive yes. Uh, they, some of them were worried a little differently, just that they recognized our need for an easement. Not necessarily saying we have to pay for it, but uh, close enough. I mean, close enough to say that they, are, they would engage in the process. So I'll come back to you with this tonight. Uh, 
as I as I told them in the letter that we would. We got the the, the head nod from the property owners on our way back to the board for consideration as to whether or not you would uh, be willing to put the sidewalk back. Do we have a we we had an estimated cost before? Is that correct? We did. I wouldn't even begin to number oh, the numbers true. out yeah. because the cost the cost is down so high. Um, and that's six out of how many? Did that's enough people that we could? That's all. The that's all oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the next step would be to get a quote or get some quotes. A new, a new quote. I can do that. I, I'm just. We've been a year on this topic. If the board's not going to entertain the sidewalk in, then there's no need to go further with this. The board wants to go further with this, then we can start that process, but it'll have to be next summer because we'll have the budget for it, and then we'll do the bid process in the spring and put the sidewalk in. So it's not something we have to look into the budget right now for? It's not in the budget. Okay, right now. okay. We have to build it into the 23 24 budget. All right. So I'm just saying, we asked the, the residents on the property. <laughs> Thank you. Their share by sending us a response and saying, you know, they would give us an easement. We've gotten those six affirmative responses. Now I need to know whether or not I need to build a budget for this this year or not. Well, I, I ha I've thought a lot about it, and I know Ruth and Pat have been here many, many times, and I thought about it a lot. If I was there, if I lived in one of those houses and the sidewalk was taken away, and really I didn't know it was, and, and it would be fine if I said, well, that's fine, I don't want a sidewalk there. But if I did want a sidewalk there and found out it's never going to be put back, I wouldn't be very happy and I'd probably feel like they do too. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, if it can be case by case, you know, I, I, I was worried about it would set a precedent if we said, okay, we'll put that sidewalk back. Um, but I don't think it's that way. I think there's places like on Congress Street only has one sidewalk and people that are fine with that one sidewalk. But it's obvious that everybody on Park Street is not fine with only having one sidewalk. And so what I'm saying is I'm in favor of putting it back um, because I would, I would want that myself, you know, if I wasn't happy about it. I, I know there's other areas in town that are fine with one. Um, Park Street is a busy street and a lot of people walk on it. I don't think there's a problem. I also sort of see just for the efficiency part of it, for, for highway, if you plow plow up one side and back the other way, it's not like a wasted trip. You're doing you're doing a U-turn because you come back anyway. So that's my two cents. I, I'd like to see it be put back. We had talked about prioritizing sidewalks. So I'm wondering where did that where does that this fit into that process? Say that again, the process. We we had we had we had talked about prioritizing the sidewalks and having a plan where does that this park street fit into that prioritized list so there is right now there's no priority list okay. because that would become from a sidewalk inventory that inventory will be done by an independent firm the cost of that will be in included in the budget for the 23-24 to be executed next summer such that we have uh, a color-coded map of our sidewalks based on their condition. Then you build your priority map from there. Now, we don't need colors to talk about the condition of some of our sidewalks. We have one on Core Street that is in miserable condition, 600 feet. Uh, it is crumbling. We've had people fall on it. Uh, we have one on East High Street. That one is crumbling. We, those are sidewalks we don't even plow in wintertime. They are so rough. Uh, we just had to close a sidewalk off the municipal parking lot because one person fell and another person nearly fell and called us and both of them, one came in person and the other one called and said, you need to do something about the sidewalk. And this one on the municipal parking lot side is one of the old brick mm -hmm. sidewalks the papers. that mm -hmm. did not work out very well many years ago. So we've closed that sidewalk at this point. So. I guess I'm concerned about these priorities too. I mean, we've only got X number of dollars to spend on sidewalks. And as you said, we've got some sidewalks in town that are in miserable shape. And, you know, it'd be good to get that survey done, 
see where see see where things are at. Um, it'd be nice to be able to re, you know fix all our sidewalks and put new sidewalks in, but we've got to. I think we've got to put the money where the pedestrian traffic is and um, and where those really bad sidewalks are. I'm not saying no to Park Street. I agree. If I was living on Park Street, yeah, I'd I'd like to see I'd like to see a new sidewalk in there too. But just uh, walking around town, there are some dreadful sidewalks right now. They they're they're an eyesore if nothing else. But there's a safety concern. Most so I agree with Don. First of all, I don't know if you know, there's a brand new sidewalk on Park Street right now. Just put on the it other, on the north okay. side. So they have a brand new sidewalk. So there is other ones I think that are more important. So my thoughts are we need to do this survey and, and do it in the budget. And if all of a sudden we see we can. One thing we're gonna have to do first is these people saying they're all right with it. They've got to give us the right of way before we do the sidewalk. Correct. Right. If the board okay, if so the that's board, gonna. Yeah. If the board voted tonight to uh, appropriate or during the budget season they would uh, approve the building of the sidewalk, and then we would start the process of, of the homeowners yep. going to the attorneys to get the uh, easements granted to us. And once we had all the easements in place, then we can uh, we could go forward with the. So I don't, I don't see us doing it this year. Maybe go up during budget, we can talk about it because I think it's something to talk about. Another issue is you mentioned cement. We talked about blacktop. Would they be happy with blacktop? That's not a matter of being happy. We changed the sidewalk policy voted to do it by zones. So we are stuck with that zoning designation <laughs> for sidewalks. We don't have the liberty of changing. You don't. No, okay. that, that street would not have, under any circumstance, been a pavement sidewalk uh, replacement. That would have been a concrete because it's a main thoroughfare and to the village. So, yeah, it would be concrete one way or the other there. The sidewalk we were discussing with the pavement would be on the back side streets that would receive less traffic. Uh, they're more for the homeowners' residents that live out in that area. Uh, so they would last longer with less use and less expensive to put in. Park Street, we're talking about concrete. Yeah, and I'm not saying there's not other streets that need it really bad. Upper Elmore Street there is terrible. It's all falling apart and yeah. it's hard to even walk on it. They all do, but I don't see why we can't make a plan. And the talk was more about should we should we do that on Park Street? You know, that's what we're talking about. That's the agenda item. It's not a matter of all the other sidewalks or the survey. We're talking about doing a survey, and, and I don't think there's any wrong anything wrong with replacing any of them over five years that need it. You know, we pick the ones that need to be first, but we're just talking about whether or not we're going to do it or not. not. So you're saying to add it to the list? Yeah. 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 Yes. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But no, no, we're not making a promise about making where priority. it goes in the priority. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So the one thing we are talking about is money, and mm -hmm. there's so much money already to do them, and the ones that we've got to repair. Does this one need to be done right now? No, Maybe well, at some well, point. Eric's talking about not till the 23 budget. Yes. Well, he did ask about doing it this year right you did say we could no okay no not in this current budget year the money for sidewalks is all that's spent the work that was done on uh probably avenue elmore street upper main street in that area around mm -hmm. the monument that was uh the remainder of last year's money and a large chunk of this year's money uh, we do have some left not nearly enough to do park street right we still have patch repairs that we need to do uh, to get us from having more complaints filed against us for the condition of our sidewalks. And understand the survey is not going to take into effect into account a sidewalk that doesn't exist. That that would come, you know, as a result of the board adding the sidewalk <coughs> to, the list. to the wish list, basically. Mm -hmm. But there is a need to get on top of these sidewalks that are frankly ADA non compliant. <laughs> That's where we're trying to focus the monies at. We base that based on what we do based on the volume of pedestrian traffic and the condition of the sidewalk itself. And that's how the decision is made in order which work with the limited money that we do have. I mean, forty thousand dollars sounds like a lot, but in the world of concrete it, it is not. Right, and there's nothing stopping for a town meeting, people making a motion to 
to have two hundred thousand dollars more put into sidewalks. I mean, that can happen all the time. You know, it happens with pavement for roads. It can happen with sidewalks. If people want to put them in, they can do it. Uh, I mean, Min Cody stood up what five years ago and said the same thing. I want to, oh, I want to allocate fifty thousand dollars. Yes, he did. I want to spend fifty thousand dollars on sidewalks. I've been here fifteen years. I remember all of those. You know? uh, that Sharon Rowell, um, I just wanted to ask you about that because we all remember men, yeah. time and time again in conversation, mentioning there's town has got all these approved monies already for sidewalks and they haven't used a lot of that money. Is there anything that's been approved in the past for sidewalks that's still just kind of sitting? No. We, we, we always, first of all, the, the answer to the question is, if it's allocated for sidewalks, we use it for sidewalks. If it's allocated for roads, we use it for roads. Okay. Nothing is like nothing's like the national government where it's just oh, okay. uh, put in the fund and right. disappears. It's, it's not like that. We keep that very close track, and Tina's very good at that too. And, and are there grant monies to go after for sidewalk work? <laughs> I believe there is. There's grant monies to go after building their sidewalks. There are. Mm -hmm. I've never found grant monies to repair existing sidewalks. Right. Go ahead, Pat. I'm so tired. There is grant money. There's grant money for sidewalks. Don, you weren't here. Park Street is a nightmare. It's a very, very busy street. Kids, if they live on our side, on the other side, kids on our side of the street have no safe way to get to the school. At the end of the street is a school for kids with autism. It's an, and I had petition because I needed flat surface to walk on, and I presented a letter to the board because I have a back injury and I can't do it driveway to driveway. And it's unfortunate. <coughs> excuse me, I'm today. If you go down the street, the sidewalks don't line up, and I worked really hard on this. I call every single animal. I've left messages, I've talked to them, and they're willing to do it. And that's what you said we had to do. And right. we did it. And that's I don't right. think any of you thought we would do it. That's why I said put it on the list. On what list? The list of sidewalks to do when we do when we do it. Right. It was it's been off the list. If we make a decision to put it on the list, but then that'll be see, built or something. You know, it, it gets very confusing, bear with me. I don't want to take up a lot of your time. When you look at like the zoning with the planning commission, we technically are part of the village. And the village is supposed to have sidewalks. And the curbs were never intended to be the blacktop. It was supposed to be granny. So we feel like we're the orphan children. We pay our taxes. We help one another. We really need the sidewalk. Thank you. <clears throat> Ruth, go ahead. Please introduce yourself to. I'm sorry. I just said one. Uh, Ruth Brown. Um, I live next door to Pat. Um, uh, when you talk about putting us on the list of having uh, getting a side, uh, getting our sidewalk back, um, we were never told that the crumbling sidewalk that was there for many, many years was not going to be replaced. So years ago, they had started a list of sidewalks that needed repair. Ours was like number one on that list because it was crumbling. The plow couldn't even plow um, uh, for many years because it was crumbling and it would ruin the plow. So um, I just would like to make sure if we are, um, if you're prioritizing crumbling sidewalks in the town, that ours is gone, it was crumbling, but now we would like to be part of that list. Yeah. I, I think that's what we're talking about, yeah. is putting Park Street on the list. So we can't, we don't have the money to do it right now. So yeah. it's, it's a positive thing that's going, the discussion? That's, it's positive here. Okay. Yeah. It just, there is no sidewalk there. All right. So, um, uh, just don't want that to be, to hang up. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Go ahead, Eric. If I can ask, because now I may be a little confused. Well, having the street, uh, having the location of the village on the street for installation of the sidewalk is, is one thing. I don't want there to be a misperception leaving here tonight. Does that mean next year, next summer, 23 24 budget, you're intending for me to have a sidewalk installed on Park Street? Or am I simply putting it on the list such that when we get the more severely decaying sidewalks fixed, that we can then consider Park Street? To me, that means that it's an overall list of the ones that we're going to do. We've got to we've got to address the ones that are the most dangerous right now, and that one will also be done depending on priority. But I think, and I think the point that, and I I understand it the same as Bob is saying, um, that we add Park Street to the list and it gets put in, it gets put in the mix, and then it it gets prioritized in after the um, sidewalk inventory. But I, I hear the point that um, Ruth and Pat are making, which was at one point it was a crumbling sidewalk, um, but then it was removed. Can it get put back in under the status of crumbling sidewalk? I that sounds I don't right. I don't know. I, I think that's a creative solution. I don't I don't know what right. the answer to that. Anyway okay. I'll play by the rules. Thank you. <laughs> Pat Michelson. Thank you. When you do this this list, there's two streets that are most dangerous. It's Elmer, I think, where you live, right? Route 12 and our street. It's horrendous. If you don't believe me, come at 6 o'clock in the morning. Come when school's coming in, coming in. You can't, you can't get out of your driveway. I mean, it's a nightmare. So when you talk about priority, you really are a priority. And I worry about, and I'm a social worker, so I worry about those kids at the end of the street. Dangerous, and this doesn't happen. And you know, maybe you're going to feel bad if something happens to some other kids. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have some folks that are coming in from uh, with questions from the chat section here. Is that okay. Brian uh, has a couple of questions. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to just ask other companies that do large scale sidewalk projects that could save some money on doing a bunch of them. Also, how come there's sidewalks in the middle of nowhere outside of town? And should there be an assessment on people inside the village? The sidewalk to nowhere, Mr. Ryan, that you're speaking of is in front of uh, Angela Norder's business office on the south end of the bypass. And that sidewalk was installed uh, as a result of the BRB decision and zoning bylaws that required new construction. Uh, and I don't know the exact wording because I'm, I'm, that's not my daily work, but uh, it, it, uh, they were required to put a sidewalk in front for future considerations, such that as development continues south on 100 as the, build, the village expands or the, however the, the construction goes, that there would be more sidewalks put in uh, eventually connecting that. It is currently the sidewalk to nowhere. Yes. <laughs> it looks silly until everything else gets connected. <laughs> There's a lot of them around. There's a lot of them like that. I, I didn't hear the first part of this question. Mm -hmm. The first part of the question is, would a large scale plan make sense so that you could have this scale to replace them all? Yeah, the, in the, so the ADA requires municipalities that have 50 full-time employees to have a sidewalk inventory conducted. Once it's conducted, then a plan has to be put together and then funding has to be dedicated to it. And then you have to make sure that you are following your plan. So we don't have 50 employees yet, but we aren't far off. So I didn't want to wait until we hit 50 or above and uh, get us some hot water. I think we're in the 46 range right now. Uh, so that's why I'm into this year, into the budget process this fall. I will be uh, putting in money, uh, requesting money uh, for a sidewalk inventory to be conducted next summer. And uh, the private company that does that will give us a map, colored map of the sidewalks in town, showing the red ones that need to be fixed and uh, yellow that are in decaying condition, the green that are okay. 
but then we can develop our plan from there. And at that time, we can go for grant money. Is that correct? For for repair of sidewalks, for, I have for new, any, but the for new. Of new ones, okay. There is grant money. Yes. Okay. So potentially, theoretically, hypothetically, we could go for grant money for the Park Street installation. Sounds like you're really close, and to have some continuity would be great, so that it's not a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> Yes, I, unfortunately, right. We've been uh, our budgeted amount for sidewalks annually is forty thousand dollars, and if you can see the new sidewalk by the fire station and the sidewalk around the uh, playground and near the monument, the total it. distance it, it, it's not that much, but that you're looking at about fifty-five thousand dollars worth of concrete work. It's a very labor-intensive industry. Yeah. We do the demolition. And then we uh, hired Jim Bradley, gave us a bid or award the bid. Yeah. And he's been doing the sidewalks, and they're doing a great job. But the cost of concrete's up, labor costs are up in order to keep labor. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's expensive. Yeah, if you're familiar with the industrial park around there, where we have many, many people walk, there's several hundred employees that, that work at different businesses there. And Howard Minaj approached all of the business owners, including Concept 2, where I work. To put in sidewalk around there, and we paid the businesses paid fifty six thousand dollars to get it out to the corner, at least so it's accessible and safe. We have so many people walk at lunchtime, and so many actually people on these motorized scooters that go around to the apartment complexes, mm -hmm. and now they're actually cutting through Concept Two because it's a paved driveway, which is even more dangerous. But that's another area that needs to be finished off from that corner by Turtle Fur back to Harold Street and back. Um, at some point. There's a lot of places like that and um, you know we're working on them as we can and having this overall plan will help us to you know put out put out the fires as we can you know get the the worst ones done and I, I agree with you Ruth I, I consider the Park Street one worse than a crumbling one it's no longer there but it's not safe because it's not there it's not unsafe because it's not there but it's still unsafe because it could be more safe having another one there but it's not as bad as having one by the church in a municipal lot that is so full of holes that people fall. So. And it's, it's not plowed during the winter, right. so people have to cross um, uh, the huge snow piles to get out to go across the street, and yeah. that's dangerous too. Yeah, we definitely need more sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, you know, good ones. I will come to you with a uh, enlarged sidewalk budget request this fall. <laughs> okay. Yes. So Kevin will be in on that as well. Do you need us to do anything else on item six? Uh, the direction that I am, am getting from you folks is that you don't object to the sidewalk going in, but it will go on a list and be prioritized for its for its uh, installation, not necessarily next summer. Right. And also, if possible, we could um, go after grant money for it. It sounds like that's a possible source of revenue. Certainly. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Okay. Uh, David Rain is also chiming in on the chat please, Bob. Yep, I can't read that. This no. is a uh, Park Street discussion. You have an offer of all neighboring parties to begin gifting a right of way, and this would be a good thing to proceed with at a minimum for any future work. You might want to consider at least this phase for planning purposes. Any grant monies that could be used for this planning phase of right of way work. The if the town were the driving force saying to the homeowners, whether you like it or not, we're going to put a sidewalk across your lawn, then we, the town would be responsible for paying for those easements. Uh, this is a different, different situation. So there aren't grant monies for private entities, only for nonprofits. So that's, that's why we're not looking for grant monies for the planning phase being the obtaining of easements. And, and to back up a little further, there was never a granted easement on that former sidewalk. Right. That's another thing that people don't realize, that we never had the easement from from the owners. I wasn't privy to the conversation. I only heard folks here making statements that when the new sidewalk went in on the north side of Park Street, it was uh, on an AOT grant, I think it was 100%. It was. Did. And the understanding was the 
sidewalk on the other side was going to be torn up because it was in decaying condition, which was never completed until last summer. Mm -hmm. And then that's when this conversation began. Yeah. I, just, I just have one other question. If years ago they had decided to just replace our sidewalk, um, uh, take it up and replace it and have the money for that, would we have had to, um, all the homeowners on the street, do the easement? We probably would have because there's some utility poles there yeah. and we would have run into right away issues. So we would have uncovered it and realized that we didn't have it right away. It would have had to happen then. Okay. It's going to have to happen either way. All right, any more discussion on this? Does that sound good, Ruth? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for all your time. All right. Next, old business. Do we have old business? No. All right. We'll move to approve the warrants. Make a motion when we approve them. I have a motion by Brian. Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. TA report, Eric. Yeah, I want to start off with the, the big one because we started in last week advertising with the, the uh, News Citizen. Uh, we put it on the radio, Facebook, uh, front porch forum. We'll put it out again tomorrow afternoon in front porch forum as well, trying to get the word out. Center Road, which travels from Route 15 north toward Hyde Park, uh, across from the man's, the former McMahon Chevrolet property. Uh, that road from the Trombley Hill Road intersection to the Hyde Park Morrisville line will be closed on Wednesday all day beginning 6 a.m. for the purpose of replacing the three major culverts that cross underneath that road. That road is one that we have targeted for blacktop for next summer, summer 23. Uh, and in order to do that, we needed to replace the very old culverts underneath the road and allow for some compaction settling over the year before we put blacktop on top of it. So that's happening Wednesday, this, this week, Wednesday. Uh, and it'll start at 6 a.m. and we'll uh, be reopened upon conclusion of all three of them being installed. The only caveat to that is if we get torrential downpours, they'll have to uh, do the work. Right now the weather report is a 40% chance, so they're driving forward with their plan to conduct that work. Um, police department interviews uh, this past week. Uh, we had uh, three candidates interview. One of them showed a great promise. Was uh, made a conditional offer, which uh, doesn't come to you for hiring until the background check and some other testing is done. Um, but uh, we did have a good candidate there that uh, is good news. Uh, he does not have any prior experience. He would need to be fully trained. Uh, but Jason is working very, very hard to get him into a level two certification class. Uh, anyway. That's, that's our goal, to try and get in there on a short notice, and Jason's really pushing this one. So, um, I, uh, a week ago tonight, I just attended Survive Vermont, which is a program the state police are uh, putting out. It, it goes along with many other safety uh, programs out there, stop, drop, and roll, as long as we all know for fire. Uh, well, Survive Vermont is a program that talks about workplace safety uh, in the event of an active shooter. And there was some information put out there. I actually uh, put us in for uh, 25 stop and lead kits to have on hand, uh, different buildings here, and uh, also uh, have information to pass on, more training for, for staff members. It was a pretty interesting conversation that night. Um, we are in the process of doing an annual, re annual review of personnel policies. You'll see that as an agenda item coming forward. Just uh, look at some that are, don't fit anymore, they're outdated, and then others that we're looking to make some modifications to. And I am gone this week, starting Wednesday through Sunday, and I'll stay for Trump. That's it. Any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Now, I just comment, just it's very sad that we have to go through this active shooter drill for the public, or for anybody, any place in the, in the country. Just mm -hmm. my personal comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Select board concerns. Don. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it is very sad that we have to do that. A mm -hmm. um, couple of things. I, I'll be helping out Jason with some hiring tomorrow. Um, I 
have, in regards to um, development in town, there's been a lot said in meetings here, the last two meetings in particular, um, about Brooklyn Street. And uh, I certainly, I've made it, I think, clear that I'm, I'm uh, concerned about high density development there. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Planning Council puts together. I imagine there's a, a few people here tonight that, that want to speak to that, and I, I hope they do. Um, on a separate note, the Dew Hamill pit was uh, an item that was crossed out tonight. And uh, I am, I, I, I talked to Kevin. I'm, I'm going to do uh, a little walkthrough of the Dew Hamill pit. I'm interested in when we do do some reclamation there that we can uh, perhaps build some recreation into that area as a piece of property that we own, like it's a valuable piece of property. I think we have a lot of um, gravel resources, earth resources there that are very valuable to the town, but I also I, I also understand that there's a, a large number of people, not myself, I'm not a mountain biker, um, but there's a large number of people that are, that are interested in that, in that area. And I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see some ability for multiple uses in that area uh, if we're going to own that own that property and if it is at all feasible i would uh, certainly um, be amenable to that conversation so just want to throw that in there all right thanks Tom. that's all i got judy do we have i should have asked this before and i'm sorry i didn't do did we get the approval for the pit yet is it out are we open is it open to us yet no so the process is still going on? We're still awaiting the Act of the Commission's final permit. We will get a permit and the restrictions within that will decide uh, you know, how we move forward. Okay. We are still acting under the, the old permit, which is where the reclaiming of the old phase two is embedded. So we're, we're moving forward with for that. We just have, we have a late bidder who came in, a uh, local contractor, so we're allowing the time to get his bid together. We'll bring that back to you at the next report meeting for, for choice. Um, I spent some time on the phone with our attorney, Brooke Dingledine, and I voiced to her uh, loudly, bluntly, straightforward my displeasure with having to be two and a half years in the process of obtaining an amendment to a permit that we've had for over 25 years where we're still on the same property, just moving location of operation. And we're unprecedented as far as I understand. No municipality has ever had to take this long to either receive or be denied an amendment to their Act 250 permit. She, she wrote a very strongly worded letter and sent it to the Act 250 Commission on our behalf. And we are awaiting not only the permit, but a response to that letter. And so the whole process is costing our taxpayers almost a half a million dollars. Is that correct? I venture to say we're over a half a million as of October last year, we were over 400,000. And we have since purchased uh, more materials. We are purchasing our sand for this upcoming winter. And uh, I, I have to hold the bag on, I cut our budget for this current fiscal year by $40,000 in anticipation that we would have our pit up and operational and be able to process some gravel material from the bank and then put through a crusher so that we could have our crushed gravel for the spring, mud season. The longer the permit takes to get here, the less likely that plan is to be. So I have shorted your budget, $40,000 for crushed gravel, and I don't have a permit yet. So if there's egg on anybody's face, it's mine, but we're, uh, we're prepared to go in there with a permit coming to us, following the measures that they lay out, and hopefully get in there and process the material so we have some fresh gravel of our own and not having to purchase it outside. Is there anything we can do, individual uh, citizens of the community? I think this is the, I think we're in a position that many municipalities found themselves or even private developers, is that nobody dares say anything because they're hoping to get a permit and fearful that by saying anything, we might jeopardize getting a permit. 
that's why I reached out to Brooke. She is our legal representative, and she wrote a very strong letter, like I said. And I'm hoping that that urgency in the letter that she uh, passed on for me is, is heard, because it is costing our taxpayers money. Well, and I'm only speaking for myself, but we know there's certain individuals that caused the, the sabotaging of, of us getting this permit in a timely manner. You know, all the different reasons. And I, I know them, I don't need to share them with everybody, but that cost us, the town, thousands of dollars because of uh, all the drama that came with trying to get that permit and the people opposed and everything that caused by it. And I hope they're listening because it's true. You know, that, this is not the opinion of the full board, but I know that whole pit situation really well. And I just think it's sad that it's cost us many thousands of dollars because of certain individuals that have fought the process. Yeah. And it's just too bad. Well, there's a fair and equal amount of blame being set on the state lot. Yeah. There well, I know it's spoken to that. unnecessary. We, we gave a leniency for the COVID uh, problems and the communication problems that created. But uh, we, I can, I can tell you that there are people with uh, opposing views on the perm, on the use of the pit, mm -hmm. who are completely in agreement that we have not, not seen a timely process here. So mm -hmm. I don't begrudge anybody speaking up uh, on their own behalf, but uh, it, it's the process itself that is dragged. And I, nobody can really explain why. I'd just like to take this opportunity. I think maybe Kevin's department, you filled in some um, on Washington Highway, where the, the uh, sewer drains, whatever they were, there were like big potholes near them. Storm drains. Storm drains, oh, thank yeah. you. And thank you so much for filling us in. Thank you, thank you. So much better. Yes, yes. I was always afraid I was going to head on somebody trying to avoid those, uh, those holes. Yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. That's it. Okay, Jess. I, on a positive note, I second that thank you, Kevin. Uh, I drive my daughter to daycare using that Washington Highway route almost every day, and I was so thrilled to see those storm, <laughs> the storm drains filled in. <laughs> um, so thanks again. Um, I um, I also want to acknowledge the number of people who are dissatisfied with the uh, proposed zoning changes um, to the Brooklyn Heights area and um, I have been talking with um, other select board members about looking into the future and um, what what we could possibly do um, to develop a, a vision for Morrisville that involves more of the public um, that's still under discussion um, and you know we're kicking around a lot of ideas so I just want to let you know that um, you know we're hearing you um, and um, we're hearing you, um, and um, in terms of the Duhamel pit, I also um, in that 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 phase one reclamation, um, I th I do think it would be a great opportunity to bring in um, even people you know um, stakeholders like the um, residents of um, of Ten Bends, for instance, and um, MCC. Um, because, you know, even if we're just, um, for instance, um, regrading and um, putting in grass seed, uh, I think it, it'd be a great opportunity to put in um, native grasses and native plants and um, plant some trees and contour in a way that is amenable to future trail building. Um, few, like a greater, you know, a greater um, um, diversity of uses. Um, you know, I've heard all kinds of creative ideas someone said you know it could be a natural amphitheater it could you know and I know I know there's all, there's there's issues with um, multi-use and you know um, making sure that we aren't um, getting in the way in any way of the gravel extraction but um, it is a, a really large piece of land that we own as a town and it's a great resource um, so I would love to see that um, that first phase pit um, I'd love to see some creative thinking around it. I don't think it has to be expensive solutions, but um, so I second, I second Don's ideas on that. Um, I, I just have to speak to the, um, a point that Bob made. I also know the number of, a number of people who out, were outspoken against the, the pit. 
Um, and I, I just want to say that um, I, um, I appreciate that that may have stalled the process, but I also appreciate that as part of the demo democratic process. It may not be convenient, but um, I always feel that even if it's inconvenient for me in one, in one um, scenario, I may find myself on the other side and really appreciate the opportunity to um, voice my concerns. So I'll just put it out there like that. Um, and um, that's all I can think of. Thanks for all everyone's hard work who works in the town offices and for the town. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. Ryan. First, I'd like to say I thank Eric for you know the budget, watching you know the light bulb is missing, <laughs> tightening down you know during the election. <laughs> I said to look at that light bulb. Turn the bands up. Turn the light bulb. <laughs> so <laughs> the. Um, the other night I was on Front Porch Forum and I see somebody mentioned something about transparency. And it kind of upset me because I was, ever since I've been here, I thought we have been. And I think it's a two-way street. You can't be tra transparent if you don't come to the meetings because we don't go door to door to let everybody know. We try to talk here and talk to people and answer their questions. And as far as that thing is concerned, half the time it doesn't work, no work, decent. So. So just so, uh, I think we are, and I hope you trust us. That's why we're here. Uh, we try to be transparent. Uh, other than that, thank our staff and doing a great job. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Brian. I, I want to piggyback on both Jess and Brian. Is that uh, <clears throat> I've given this a lot of thought. I, you know, I read all the stuff in Front Porch Forum and all the articles in the paper about not just Brooklyn Street, Brooklyn Street happens to be the hot topic item right now, but the zoning, whether it's up in Fairwood Parkway or or Graham Mink's new development here on Main Street or any of them, the, the what's going on in town and and you know, I no doubt know that people are very interested in in seeing what kind of buildings are being built and the the thing that gets me, like Brian says, um, Attending meetings is really, really important. Um, it's not always a fun thing to do. We've been doing it, I've been 15 years, you've been probably 20. And, um, and even before I got on the board, I would go to DRB meetings and planning council meetings and select board meetings a year before I got on the board. And, and granted, back then there wasn't as much development going on, so, but I learned a lot about it. And, and it is sort of like the, the decisions get made by the people that show up. It's, it's sort of like a town meeting. Town meeting for many years, there's 200 people there, 210 people. And we'd make decisions of millions of dollars just for those, those, those people there. And besides anything that was Australian ballot, of course. Um, but, but I agree, as far as transparency goes, we try really hard to be that way. Like, I can't think of anything that we could do more except for you know, try to have a bigger virtual presence for the planning council meetings, the DRB meetings. If we can do that, I think we should do that. I think if we could get more people to come to meetings, that's paramount. Right now, with COVID concerns, that's been that's been an issue in the past, and and I don't think I think it's flattening out. I think people are more um, at ease with attending meetings. You know, in a packed room, um, maybe not totally, but I think we're getting there. And I'm hoping that um, more people, I love to see a packed room. You know, uh, I've been to many, many planning council meetings when there's only the planning councilors there and maybe one or two people. And they're making decisions that affect everybody in town. And you don't realize it. And I, and I think, you know, a big part of it may be because the notification is not there. Um, whether it's, it's put on the website, we do our due diligence with advertising changes I know Todd, a lot of people are unhappy with Todd, but he does everything by the letter of the law, by the zoning. He studies zoning, he knows all about it. He was a city planner before he came here, and he knows what he's doing. But that doesn't mean that everybody approves what he's doing, and it also doesn't mean that um, you don't have a voice to make a difference. You know, if you go to these planning, planning council meetings and you know, there's seven people are there, or however many people are there, they're making decisions and discussing it the best way they know how. That may not be what everybody wants in town. You know, that people may not like the, the seven new buildings along Main Street, you know. 
or how they're built or anything. And, and I just think that this is an opportunity to have more people get engaged. You know, and I've said it before, and I think it's not so much transparency, it's I think it's an avenue to communicate. And this is like what Jess was talking about. We've, we've had those conversations about how do we get it out to people? You know, it's certainly really, in my opinion, it's not Front Porch Forum. Because Front Porch Forum is usually second or third hand, and there's not a lot of fact and data with it, unfortunately. That's just the way media is. And Facebook's <coughs> worse. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. And, and News and Citizen, Tommy can come after me, but sometimes he doesn't know. He, you know, he's not printing fact either. The best way to be involved is to be here when these things are discussed and when their decisions are made. And as I've been part of a lot of it, but there's a lot of it I'm not. I don't go to a lot of these plan, plan council meetings anymore. I know you do a lot now, and it's important. And I love to see you, you folks out there concerned about, you know, concerned about right now Brooklyn Street, you know. Um, I know I got an email from Gary today that uh, he's lived on Brooklyn Street for 50 something years, you know, and he was my science teacher back in school. And, and I know that he's uh, concerned about it too, but your voice counts, you know, to me it does. And we, we have to have everybody come out and be present when we make decisions, because it's really important. And it's not like we don't care what you guys think, we, we do our best, but we, we try to make decisions based on that. And I know that the planning council is the same, they spend hours and hours and hours going over stuff, but maybe they don't get enough input, you know, in theory from the people that live next door, you know. And I think that's where it's lost. I, I feel like it is. And you have an open, you have a category for community concern mm -hmm. on your agenda. That's the big difference between the planning council and this board. I don't think a lot of that front porch forum comments has really been directed to the select board as much as it's been to Planning Council or yes. par parts or, of the town. Yeah, I mean, and, it's, yes. And you know what, Sharon? Yeah. Years ago, I think I'd been on the board two years, <coughs> and I, I remember Dan Lindley at the time, there was no place for anyone to come and talk. And, and I actually said that. I said, Dan, why can't we have people get the chance to stand up and say what they think? Something they're upset about. Buckwheat would come and say it anyway. Um, but, well, probably would too. but then I said, actually, Dan called the state or VLCT and said, can we put an agenda item, community concerns? And he said, yeah, we can. So that's how it started. Thank and, you. And I think it should be that way. And you know, it's become a really big thing. And I think the voices need to be heard. You know, we have to find a way, a conduit for that to happen. Not, not just select board meetings. Because as, as you folks are learning, a lot, a lot of these decisions are made before it gets to us. You know, like the DRV stuff, like I said to you earlier, Tom. The DRV stuff is statute, you know, and folks don't know that. So, but anyway, I know I've gone over and over this, but I just, I want you folks to understand where we are, you know, our point of view. We want to have your input on everything. And I get emails every day and I'm like, my gosh, it's, you know, I get it. So, anyway, that, that's all I got to say. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I'll get off my soapbox. Now. I've been gone for a few minutes. So I, I, know, I, uh, I forgot one thank you. Sarah, the election went really good, I thought. Yes, all right. Thank you. Good job, good job, job Sarah. Sarah. Yes. Both elections. Oh. Both elections. She all the primaries with the village meeting the next oh, one. I didn't hear that one. Right. Okay, so now we'll go into community concerns. Did I, you? I need to take a quick break. Okay. How many, how many folks want to say something to community concerns, or have I said enough? We have two online that have left comments that were put during community concerns. Do you want to address those first? Yes. Can you wait till Justice back? Yeah. The first one I think you can answer without Justice's presence. Uh, from David Green, he's asking, what more sound board is responsible for the open question? What board is responsible or accountable for the village wastewater treatment plan? That would be the village trustees. That's correct. The village trustees are in control of the water street. Uh, and the second one, we'll wait, we'll wait for uh, Jess to get here. Okay. Has, uh, yeah. 
place in jeopardy. Can I put in a couple of plugs? I was going to yeah, go for it. So, um, one is there's money. If anybody's, I've said it before, I want to repeat. If anybody's struggling paying delinquent taxes, delinquent utilities, um, delinquent heating costs, there's free money out there. Uh, we received our first um, delinquent tax payment. Um, so if people have questions, contact me. The other is um, elections. Um, I'm a statistics person. It wasn't our highest participation for a midterm primary, but it was one of our, I think it was our second highest percentage. Our checklist keeps growing, so our percentage goes down as we, as we get um, bigger. Uh, for November, for the general election, the state is going to mail everybody your ballot. You can either um, choose to vote it early and return it, you can um, choose to vote your ballot and bring it to the polling place and turn it in on election day. You can choose to just vote on election day at the polling place. Um, but I have to submit to the state, make sure that all mailing addresses are correct for September, on, by September 1st. So if you know that you will not be here in September and we need to mail it to another address, please let me know. So would, you know what? I'm not sure. I need to check. It's it's all done. This is a state election, not local, so it's all done. What the state's going to do? Yeah. Sarah, what about the so that we had redistricting, and so some Stow voters are now in our district. How does that work? So that um, so that already happened for the primary okay. also. So those Stow voters, they vote in Stow. So Stow was split into two. Okay. Um, Morristown remained whole. So I was the uh, um, I'm the representative clerk for the district because there's five towns. So then I have all those five. The other four towns report their numbers to me. And then I had to report to the state for the whole representative district uh, the results on Friday. So as far as voters concerned, it's just more paperwork for me. Is all it is in the end. Thank you, Thank you. <coughs> Eric. Go with that. Yeah, uh, Laura Streets asks: Is the dinner with the trustees and select board and town staff paid for with taxpayer or ratepayer money? And is it scheduled again for 2022? In the past, it has been paid for by the trustees, and then we paid for it. It goes back and forth. Sometimes we pay for it, sometimes they do. But they usually host it at Copley Country Club, and we have discussions about um, different um, agenda items that we might um, talk about together, where there was one time we talked about buying an excavator together or buying culverts or something shared projects that the town and the village do together and we roll that into a select board meeting as well um, but that is uh, it gets catered usually by copley country club and uh, when the trustees do it they do prime rib and we did steak last time we may have to do hamburgers next time i don't know that's the last year the, the, uh, the town government budget paid for the, the cost of the, the dinner it's not scheduled as of yet this year. I haven't right. had that conversation. But it is that something that Brian and I brought up quite a few years ago. That, that, to give a little bit of history of it, we we haven't always gotten along well with the trustees. There's always been sort of a um, thing between you know the power of trustees and the power of the select board. And for one reason or another, it, it wasn't with us, but it was uh, uh, boards before us. And we never understood why, so we decided to take the walls down and say, hey, let's get together and talk about talk about. So the main thing is, uh, you know, we pay the street, and the next day they tear it up, you know, and never talk to us, or, or vice versa. It's like, you know, it just didn't make sense. So we started meeting and working out projects that were upcoming, and we found, wow, you know, probably a good idea to work together. So Yeah, Maple Street was a good... Maple Street was, it was great. a good one. We worked together and bought an excavator to work together. And they paid for it and we did. So we ended up with an excavator. Yeah. And I think we saved, I don't know, 500. Well, we also saved Dan Lindley, was, was he was, you know, that was his forte, was a general contractor 
for, he was a, a CB in the Navy, he was a construction battalion, so he knew, he was the clerk of the works for the town. They had bid the project at 1.6 million or something, and we, they were able to do it for not half, but a little more than half, uh, which saved a huge amount of money. So, and that was the, the town involvement with, we, we actually subbed him out to work with them and, yep. and use local contractors, and it was, it was a great effort. That, yep. That's a really good point. So, anyways, is, no, does anyone have community concerns here? If, I, if we could clean up what's on, we've got online. Yep. People don't mind here. Yep. Uh, Laura has, has her hand up here. Her last thing she wrote was planning does not make decisions. She's clarifying the question about uh, the, the roles of the different boards. Planning does not make decisions, they make recommendations for zoning changes. The select board and trustees make decisions. DRB make decisions based on federal, state statute, laws, and local zoning bylaws. That's correct. And she is Can I speak now? Hello? Hi, Laura. Hi. So, um, Bob, you didn't answer my question. Uh, oh, there sorry. Was Just to be clear, the steak dinner and prime rib dinner do the taxpayers or the rate payers pay for that dinner? It's either or, we take turns. So yes, taxpayers and rate payers are paying for your dinner. Yes. Well, I would but like- I to kind of factor that into the hundreds and thousands of hours I put in over the last 15 years and uh, my huge salary that I'm getting from the town. We get paid like $100 a month, Yeah, just to yeah. be clear. So why does take dinner a year on top of uh, how many hours? Oh my God. Excuse me, I've we been on about planning $4 and, an hour. Excuse me, I've been on planning in DRB for the last five years. We do not receive a cent. We certainly do not get dinner. And given the fact, and again, having negotiated with Madison Square Gardens, I've never heard of this practice. And I think going forward um, that the select board and trustees need to find a way to work with it, work together that's not going to cost the taxpayer a state dinner. I, I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. Um, no, and last we offered, year, I remember the first time we offered to pay. Remember we offered to pay for a meal and they said no. Right now you can take it out of my pay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it should be a budget line item and let the voters vote on it. Sure. Okay. They could be Great. right beside our salary, too. Yep. So we have uh, Zeph Bryant. I don't think he's there. He's gone. gone. Sorry. Uh, he went on to say, I'd like to thank everyone for what you do. I want to get more involved. I struggled to get on the Zoom with my phone. It was easy to find my laptop. Uh, David Rain is someone I want to thank you for the explanation to his questions. And Jeff Egan has a quick community concern wondering what the status of Garfield Road paving is. We moved to North after last year's culvert work. Great question, and I love the audience on the floor for this. Yes. Uh, we've been in communication with Pike Industries. They received our bid for paving. They are bringing a reclaiming crew in here at the end of August to begin the reclaiming work with Garfield Road. While that is ongoing, they will begin paving the stagecoach road. They will move from there with their paving crew down to Randolph. They'll do the Randolph Road paving, and by the time that's done, the reclaiming work will be done on Garfield Road, and they can then move up to Garfield and finish that. They've told me that they are, uh, as long as the weather doesn't interfere with their plans, uh, they will have Garfield Road and all the others completed by the end of September. And along with that, um, Pike Industries only has one reclaiming crew for all of Vermont and New Hampshire. So that is why it should have happened a long time ago. So, but great question, and um, I get that asked every day, nearly, in the email. No, thanks for the detailed response. I appreciate all the work you guys do. Just kind of check. Thank you. Is there any other community concerns? Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, my name is Chris and Maria. I have a question on where do I find an accurate boundary line where high density rents residential and low density residential for Best Street? Because it seems like it keeps moving further down the street every time I look at it online. That's 
that's the current map right there. Right, but is that one lot or is it two? That looks like more than half of the street. You can see uh, is that on the back street. Yeah, that's a okay. back street. Yeah, right. Bob, if I can just speak, the map itself is becoming outdated. It is becoming. Uh, I heard Todd on the phone today speaking with another constituent about our zone, current zoning map. They were referencing um, uh, Fairwood Parkway. Yeah. And that the online map is very difficult to use because there's no legend. And is Todd that the same gets, one? Todd only gets once a year to make updates to the map. It's our contract with our folks to do that for us. I can't even speak to how accurate the map is. Uh, I, I would leave that to Todd. Yeah. I'll ask Todd to get back to Kristen tomorrow yeah. with an answer to that. That works she Yeah. How will he get back to you? Does he have my email address? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there any other questions? Go ahead, Tom. Just a second. You can go next. Yeah. Come on to the microphone. Thank you. Welcome. Hey. I'm Barry Russo, I've lived in Morrisville for 16 years. Is this the right forum to discuss the Brooklyn Street development, or is it not the right place to discuss it? Well, it's, it's not a formal hearing. We, but we, can't, can we can't do anything about it, yeah. so you, okay. can, you can share your concerns. Yeah. So, it is going forward, that they're going to build the multi-unit built club? We don't know? We don't know. No. Don't know. no. Okay, because I see construction and earth moving and things like that going on over there. Okay, so could it have been stopped at any time by the citizens of Morrisville? That's a good Wait, question. Which, are you talking about Jersey Heights or? Talking about Brooklyn Street. Brooklyn Street. Brooklyn yeah. Street, yeah. That hasn't started yet, correct? Is there, no. No. Is there excavation being done on Brooklyn Street right not now? That, not so oh, yeah. I'm talking about across the street from the um, Irving gas station. Yeah, yeah. that's for Jersey. Jersey. That's Jersey. That's Jersey. Oh, Jersey. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. 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 Could that have been stopped? Could that's that your question? Because if, if I understand, it's going to be two oh. buildings, four stories high. 136 yeah. units. I believe. 136 right. units. Not, yeah. not on the, it's not, on that's the not on 100. That's, the that's going to be in the back. Yeah. 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 It's going to be but still in Morrisville. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. 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 Where the new one already started sticking right up. It's yeah. out behind that, right? It's out, yeah, yeah. It's in, it's right. In but that is, that's been through all of the all permitting of the, process. Yeah. Okay. Permitted. So it's a, per, it's a fully permitted project. I read Fine Porch Forum. I read the News and Citizen. I'll say it correctly. <laughs> um, I'm on Facebook. And the first I heard of it was when it was under construction. Hmm. I, how did this big complex get? It was in the News and Citizen because it had pictures and everything, I believe. Not, yeah, after, after it was done. Right, there was no way to know who was at the meetings and, and the thing was. So right, but it was the, brought up at the meetings, it wasn't on the tenure, you wouldn't even know unless you right. yeah. that's, that's the problem with having. Yeah, that's the part of the attending planning council meeting that's been discussed for months you know but if you don't if you're a person that doesn't go to those meetings and you wait to wait to hear the news on those outlets you're speaking of then you might hear about it very last minute you know but that's what my plea was earlier it's just we've got to get more people to the meetings involved making decisions about whether to or not to do something yeah. um, give the feedback to the people planning and i think i think it was the, those decisions, I believe, were made at the DRB. They were. That they had, they had to go through the permitting process. But the DRB is the one who says yay or nay for the permits. And, and DRB stands for developmental development developmental review board. Yeah. Okay. Laura right. Streets is on one. your permit for nothing. She is a member of the DRB. Yes. This is no longer an active permit in front of the DRB, so she's allowed to speak to it. Yep. And she can explain some of the process that they go through with the DRB. Good. And, uh, entertain this thing to sure. Go ahead, Laura. That'd be great. Um, sure. This was, um, uh, Tom, thank you for asking. This actually was a, a, a fairly long process that came through the DRB. Um, it's based on, the original permit was based on established density rates that for that area that uh, this, uh, the state designated and the uh, local designated. The DRB has a list of very, very specific 
criteria on which we can basically refuse a permit. And the one that came, the only one that really applied to this was, is it, um, does it fit into the neighborhood or does it destruct the neighborhood? Um, and consequently the vote was three to two. Two people said, yes, it does not fit into the neighborhood. It will deteriorate, it will deteriorate the value. Three other people said yes. So the permit passed. Wait, the, can you say that over again? You just said three and three. Can you say oh, that over again? Three, 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 two. Uh, three, two. Oh, three, so two people four, said three, that it okay. would deter the neighborhood. Three said it would not. Um, you can find those that list in the um, uh, in the uh, zoning bylaws. You as a citizen can go to planning and ask for additional requirements, but we are limited by federal and state statutes over any local. So our hands are really tied with um, what we can do, especially currently in regards to uh, density in um, in towns. But, but Laura, you are saying that people can attend and ask for contingency permitting, is that what you're saying? Um, they can attend and um, mod so zoning bylaws can never be less than state and federal, but they can be stricter. Um, so they can attend a planning and uh, request uh, zoning um, clarifications or making them stricter uh, for further going forward. Um, but at this point, that's the, you know it's a process. Uh, and that's where my understanding the Brooklyn Street, you know, I don't is currently in that process. So it's not a one step zoning. Basically, I mean, uh, the planning committee puts proposals forward uh, for zoning bylaw changes to the select board and the trustees, and then they vote on whether those zoning bylaws should go into effect. So, you know, it you're you're talking like a year, year and a half before we can actually make any changes. Um, but why you should be involved. But Hope that helps. Done bar and already, so there's no point in closing the gate. Right. Yeah. Laura, do you remember when that project first came in front of the DRB? That specific one? Was that like a year ago? The one on the one um, uh, across from Irving. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it was quite a while ago. Um, it's like in a year. Yeah, it took, I, I can't remember the exact, but uh, they came before us like three different times with different levels. And ultimately, you know, nothing happens unless you get the Act 250 permit and the state permits have to come through before we can do anything. And by the time it comes to us, our hands are really tied. Um, and again, I, I encourage you to look at the zoning bylaws and you can see there, I think there's basically six criteria that we can refuse a permit and it's very limited. Um, so you mentioned the Act 250 permit. As John Q. Citizen, I don't know the difference between an Act 250 permit and an OU812. Exactly. Yeah, so maybe we need a liaison to go between the town official gobbledygook and mm -hmm. English that we all understand. That's always a struggle. You're, you're yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's going to be a costly one for the town now. Do we even have the fire equipment to handle a four-story building? We do. Yeah. We do. We do. Okay. So, do we have the storage uh, ability to handle all of that storage? Yes. Yeah. 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 We do. We do. That's part of Act 250 and right there have answering yeah. those questions. Department to handle these additional. Yeah. And Jason's right behind you. And okay. um, we have impact statements from them. Um, Tom, can I add that? when it comes to us that um, it's gone through both police and fire already, they've permitted it um, and Morrisville uh, Water and Light, they have those permits in hand before they come to us. Yeah, all of those things were discussed in past. And it's also, it also goes to the, uh, this project went to the Lamoille County Planning Commission as well. So there's a lot, a lot of steps it goes through. Right. And I'm assuming that some of this was probably in the back of the newspaper where they they say yeah. these things are going right. on. Right. And, and it yeah, sounds like one, the 13th hour is yeah. just hatching it on everybody. And but it's, it's really not that way. It's the boring 
diet, you know, stuff you read in the back, but. Mm -hmm. We certainly so involved. So we need to get more front page. If it's going to map this out as much as this is, it, it should be more front page. And I guess that's a conversation I'll have with the news and citizen about that. Yeah. So it may be legal and permitted to do all this, but I don't think that necessarily makes it right. Thank you all for your time. Thank, thanks all. Thank you. Appreciate See your time. See you at all the future meetings. Stay <laughs> <laughs> good. Is there any more comments tonight? Oh, hold on a sec. David, you're first. Uh, my name is Dave Campbell. I live here in Morrisville. I've lived here all my life except for four years. I was in the military. And it seems like our town is, you know, we allow all those buildings over here by the senior center. And they, they didn't replace existing buildings. They were just crunched in there together. And to me, it's a big fire hazard. If one started on fire during the middle of the night, and it wasn't caught until it got to a, a level where, you know, it's gonna take out many things around it. So maybe it was discussed, but um, <clears throat> my concern is does Morrisville really need all these apartments? We got that many people that need a home, or are these people coming from Chittenden County, or, or what? I, mean, I find it hard to believe there's that many people in this town that were sleeping on the streets, and now they're in these apartments. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. I know. And the building that caught fire by whatever you want to believe started it. Right. Jason probably can answer the question if But uh, I understand that this ladder truck that the town purchased quite a few years ago would not be usable on Pleasant Street. I think that's the name of the street where the fire was. Hutchins Street. Hutchins Street. Street. Street, okay. But I understand from some of the fire people that that truck cannot be used over there because of the, the big in incline. And it wasn't used when they did have the fire. How are we going to fight fires that right. five-story building? Right, we have my so does not fit into this this town. Right, the the new the new truck, the newer truck we bought, we replaced that tower truck with, is a quint. It, it's both a ladder and a pumper, and the the idea was our old pump, our old tower became decertified. It wasn't good enough to be certified again, and and that's where we rely on Stowe. Because Stowe has a tower truck. And so we re rely on our mutual aid for things like that. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely a concern. But to go along with you, I, I couldn't imagine either. And I've heard so many statistics about people in Morrisville, in Lamoille County, wanting apartment houses here, and it's real. I, I do know that there was over 400 applications for those 24 units. That 24 unit building, the new one we're talking about. Right from people. That yeah, here. most from for people around here which is just unbelievable. And I know it too, because I have apartments and I have people call and it's, it's un unbelievable. Uh, it's unbelievable. There was a, there's, I don't, I can't quote the, the uh, study, but I think nationwide and especially in Vermont, we should have been building, I'm gonna pull a number out of my head, a thousand, five thousand houses a year. And the state has not kept up with it. And right now, we have seen the tipping point of not keeping up with the housing needs. So, yeah, and, and when you say when they're not, we're not having, an, we're, we can't regulate who moves in here. I, I hear this a lot, you know, are they local residents? Do we, I wasn't, I'm not a local resident. I moved here 22 years ago. Am I not allowed to live here? No, so, I understand, the, I understand so, where you're coming from. Right, so we, we can't close the, we can't put a moat around the town and say, and pull the drawbridge up and say nobody else can come in here. And so we have to be looking at that also. So our sewer system and our water system is going to accommodate all these new places? Yes, yeah. they, 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 they have to be able to in order to build. Yeah, the, the uh, water and sewer, I, I'm, I'm not employed by them or anything, but I know that they have the ability to add on 
chambers. They've got up to three chambers. And the amount of units that are being added on is just a fraction of what they can handle. They can handle a lot more. Uh, their concern, actually, at the time was the breweries and uh, the BOD was the, the type of waste that a brewery gets rid of. But residential waste, they could accommodate thousands of units before they had to worry about it. But, you know, like I say, it's just by concern, the village is changing, you know, Brooklyn Street. If you allow those three big buildings in there and tear down, you know, like the funeral home that's been there since before I became alive. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a unique looking building. It probably could be made into some apartments, certainly not 24 apartments, but, right. you know, four apartments or, rather than be torn down. And that's the part, some of these buildings have been here over 100 years that they've torn down. Yes, at this point they got into bad shape, but could they have been refurbished and... Right. and <coughs> It's just our our town isn't what it used to be, and, and I realize you know progress comes, and, but it seems like we've gone way beyond the norm uh, with all these big apartment houses. But I have noticed, I'll give Grant credit that the newer ones he's been putting up lately do have some character to them compared to a south lawn. Thanks, David. So one thing too on the fire, most of those buildings are sprinkled. So there's a big pipe that the fire truck hooks to. It puts the fire out without even going. Yeah, it's on the inside. Yes. But this this fire was on the outside. No, no, it, was on no, the it inside. wasn't. It was all on the inside. All the inside. But probably the sprinklers aren't there yet either. Right. I'm saying once that building's built. Oh yeah. You know, I don't know if they work 100 percent, but usually they're sprinkled and they're big pipes where they just hook a truck on and turn it on and. Right. No, I was just concerned that I knew we bought this use a uh, ladder truck that would reach five, six stories high. Mm -hmm. They couldn't use it on that street because of the... It was a brand new truck. Layout. Layout. Yeah. It wasn't used, it was brand new. Yeah. Oh, it was brand new, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's just a concern that we have yeah. the truck, but then it's not yeah. usable. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Who, who else? Yeah. Go ahead, ma'am. Please introduce yourself. I'm Laura Green. I live on Best Street, and I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, this has been an eye-opening experience, and I, I just want to express that um, there's a politician I admire very much who recently said, politics is not going to stay out of your life. What are you doing to be involved in it? And I'm hearing you say that, and I'm just saying yes. And I've, I've lived my life. I've raised my kids. We've lived on that street, and I've stayed out of everything, and all of a sudden I'm going, oh my God, people have been working diligently, and I've known nothing about it. So we're, we're here just to learn and do whatever part we can have. And, and just to add to the conversation about growth in the town, and you know, I have freaked out about it quite a bit myself, and yet we have a daughter who's getting married. She needs a home. They just found an apartment in those new buildings. And if this is happening, our children are growing up, you know, the families in this town are growing up and needing homes. And, you know, it's not all <coughs> pulling people in from other places. It's, it's, it's the residents who have dug their roots here that want to stay here. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Bob, I just want to thank every one of you. I, I've never been to any meeting. This is from the second meeting I've ever been to had to do with the town other than town meetings. But I never realized how much work five people had to do and how much <laughs> responsibility that you had to do. And you all have full-time jobs unless you know, you're retired. And, and yet you come here and, and you get all kinds of language from yeah. the audience. And, and I still see smiles on your face. So then I get up at 3.30 in the morning and go back to work. So like, thank you very so much. You're, 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 the next you. meeting you come to, you have to bring dark chocolate. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. My wait. wife makes a good dark chocolate. All right. We may not yeah. want to take that, though. Cause I really appreciate you being here. We took a dinner and get in trouble. I really appreciate you being here. David, uh, I'll call you out. David wondered about some of the development we were doing and some of the, the purchases we did. We, sold in town garage and bought a lot and everything. And he called me up and he said, can you come talk to me? And I, I went right to his house and I 
met with him and talked to him for about an hour, and it was great. I, I really appreciated being able to do that and being welcomed into your house, and it, that was great, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you're here tonight. And I'd just like to say that it's the board's transparency that brought us all here tonight. So don't, don't think you're not transparent. So. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to hear. Any other comments? All right. Is there any other business? Tom, Tom, oh, so. Tom, go ahead. Do you want to be the last guy? Or gal? The last word. The last speaker. My name is Tom Cody. And the one thing I'd like to let you know that all the new buildings on Bridge Street on the 137 uh, units that are going up on Jersey Way, uh, not one of them is affordable housing. Not a single one of them. So those 400 or 500 people that were looking for homes, that those buildings do not have them. The one that burned is the only affordable one. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is. Now, as, uh, <coughs> transparency. I'm going to always talk about transparency until we get it full throughout the, the town government. Now, this last year, I will give this select board plenty of credit that you guys have come 100% on your transparency. A lot of this, a lot of putting out the word, and, uh, and get people here tonight. Now you start going to the other board meeting. Start by going looking at the minutes. Now, I don't know who takes minutes for and I thought I would hate to have be the person to do that. But you can't find anything, any information from the minutes. These, these boards have to be on Zoom. And I just found out tonight, the, the planning board was Zooming in 127-2021. They used to Zoom their board meeting. Why can't they do it now? I don't understand. The, those meetings were all, everybody was in their own homes. There, yeah. was, there wasn't, there weren't any public meetings at all because that was, during, it, that was COVID. Then you could have the public Zoom in with them. Correct? Or am I wrong? It's, I, think, I think you're right, Tom. I think we, we're still exploring it, but. We are. Yeah. And the reason it hasn't happened, because, well, during COVID, they, had, they went remote totally, oh. and then they also were at the country club where they weren't set up to do it. But I'm all for it, trying to get it There's possible. no reason for the trustees not to be up here, which they were at the, at the meeting, uh, and then zoom it. There's no reason for the DRB not to be here. Yeah. And there's certainly no reason for the planning board not to be here to Zoom. Right. It's gonna cost money because it's not easy. I understand that. But we can afford to do it, I think, right. to get people involved so we're not finding out what is happening after. Right. So, Right, and the best way is to be here because I know, I know I've said this a hundred times probably, but minutes do not show everything that happened in a meeting. They're only supposed to say the actions that were taken. Yeah. So you got to be careful with that because literally the state statute is actions were taken by a board. That's what's in the minutes. And in some towns, like Johnson, for a, it's like a court stenographer. They record everything everybody says. But, and Judy does a great job with what she puts on. But 100% better than it was two or three years ago. That's exactly right. She does a great job. And, uh, but, but, uh, like I said, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, that is one. Another one is this Brooklyn Street thing. I don't know why, as the slack boy, you can't have me on the agenda and invite some of these planning board people up here to explain what they are doing and answer the questions of what's going on up there. What, the, what is the need for high density? Is what you be my first question. The housing needs. The housing needs the main thing and the developers come in. They Does see it the need to be do. on Brooklyn Street? I, I don't know. That's why you need right. the planning board up here, so we can ask them questions. Because right. we go to the planning board meeting, which we have done. Yep. There is no place for us to talk. Right, that's what Sharon was saying. She's absolutely well, There's a lot of people over there. It's not family friendly. We've got to get them up here in front of the camera and talk and let us know what's going on. I like that idea. I, I so didn't realize can we put it on the agenda? I mean, you guys can take a vote right now and divide them up. 
I don't think there's anything we can do if they come here. We're, we're, well, I know yeah. it. Of course, the other thing is, a lot of this is driven, in my mind anyways, by a person who goes through, goes through the zoning, find out what the, he can put on this piece of land. And if as long as it's zoned for what he's doing, then he starts to get his permit. We don't get the permits. He goes there, he goes to the DRB. Well, here's the problem with that, is they're trying to change the zoning so somebody can then go and right. do it. Well, then that should be changed too. You know, stop it or whatever. But as far as this zone and this other one, uh, the big one on uh, Jersey Heights, that one there is uh, even the Act 250 went in and approved it. So, yeah, but I think Tom's talking, Tom's talking about the Brooklyn Heights situation. Not, when not, not, yes, yeah. I know what he's talking about. And it's, yeah. I just think that it's yeah. people that are <laughs> trying to buy property, and once they own the property, they can do what they want and not what we want them to do, uh, if, as long as they obey the rules, that's my opinion. Right, yeah. Yeah. And as I, as I understand it, now this is how I understand it, I kind of feel like, I felt at first like we were thrown under the bus, the, the select board was, because mm -hmm. we made a mistake. I know it was put in the paper, we, we made a mistake. We didn't make a mistake. Right, I know, I know, we but that was, that's what Tom, that's what the paper said. But, but what happened was, and Eric actually served on the select board at that time as well. There's a few of us that were, Judy was also on there. The, the folks who live up in Fairwood Parkway were unhappy to see all the pop-up apartment houses going up there. So they came to us, they filled the room, there was 30 people here, whatever, and they said we would like to have the density change from medium density down to light density. And But the only way to do that at the time was to take uh, apartment houses out. We had to take the apartment houses out, which changed the zoning everywhere in town. We did not know that that's what happened. And that's what manifested into the change over over on Brooklyn Heights. And it doesn't make sense to me, but I, I now understand it. And that was an inadvertent change that we made to try to keep what was going on up there. And that was... That and, was and there wouldn't be any issue if the Faith Funeral Home was still in business. Right. We wouldn't be having this discussion. Exactly. And it's not. Exactly. It's yeah. That's, that's what, that's what, pro that's what, but precipitated this whole discussion right. is it this did. one piece of property was changing and every other piece, almost every other piece of property, maybe except one from Ace Glass down right. is all multifamily. Right. So it it changed the whole complexion of it. On the west side. On, yeah, on, on, the, on, the, west that, on the west side. This, this recommendation is what I think, and I'm going to read it to you. Can we restore the multifamily dwellings allowable in the MDR, the medium, and place restrictions on types of structures allowed, such as six, say, sixplex, which could be the funeral home for this state? And limit twenty to uh, at limit uh, to two stories high, and also to to keep historical preservation criteria. That would solve the whole thing. And I, you know, the, uh, I, I don't know. That, that might be possible. You know, I. Because it might be. The, if you say it, it's possible, it's good. And speaking with Todd, <laughs> I, I I met with Todd about the whole thing and. And I know that the, the potential for the funeral home property is matched up to what the Wickard Apartments is. Right. There's 19 units there, and that's a two-story building. Right. And that's almost the same square footage, yeah. uh, you know, lot right. size. And that's why it's compared to that. And that's, you know, just three houses down, four houses down. Yeah. That's why they're using that as a possibility. But that, again, is two stories. I don't know about what we can do as far as zoning goes, what we're allowed to change and what we're we not. We can't change zoning. Right. No, but that, well, so planning, that's what they're trying to do with the, the planning commission. They're, 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 they're trying working. to change that so yeah. the funeral home can build a six-story building. I don't, I don't know, but that's their purview, that they're supposed to be in charge of Listen, changing can we zoning. Can get somebody up here at the next board meeting and discuss and find out exactly what they want to do? So whatever, whatever proposals they do make are going to come here, yes. correct? Yes. Right. Yeah. And the select, they're only going to be enacted if we allow them to be enacted. Yes. Yeah. So whatever is being discussed at the Planning Council, and you know, I've spoken to several people in the crowd tonight, right. we, you know, 
encourage you to go to those meetings, find out what's being discussed, but ultimately, this will be my first time through it this fall, but the whatever those propo zoning proposals are, they will come to us sometime in the next two, three, four months. Yes. And we will get a chance to discuss those. Yes. And we'll get a chance to decide whether or not they're going to go through, which includes Broken Heights is my my understanding it, that it is being discussed. I know the planning council meetings I've been at so far, it hasn't been discussed, but I haven't been to every single one either. Well, and there's I also asked today, uh, Todd, to put on the agenda to the planning council, Brooklyn Street, to have the people with a chance to, because to, we haven't had a chance to talk. We got been on the agenda. You, you stand up, say something, and you're not talking about the agenda. You want control, Bob. Well, we we want to. We're just here to say we're. We know you guys are all paying attention, and we are too. We're very concerned with everything. We're paying attention to everything that happened, and we're doing our best. And there's also, I, I'm sure you're aware of it, but the, the Planning Council is also um, looking at proposals to, um, to instate some historical um, aesthetic standards. And, they, and you, you heard, they came to us saying, is this something you'll approve? And we said yes. We, no, yes, I'm this looks good. Yeah, right, there. right. I just so you know that you're right. I mean, yeah. they they propose the changes, but we do have a say. Oh, yeah. But it's equal between the select board and the um, the, the trustees. village trustees. Right. Yes. So yeah. that's something to know too. So if we voted, yeah, if we voted no and village trustees voted um, yeah. yes, yes, then it doesn't nothing go happens. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. Tom, you, I want to, I want to. Go back to something you said about affordable housing and put yeah. a plug in here. Yeah. I'm on the Loyal Habit Tap for Humanity Board. Yeah. We're going to be building another house. I hope to see you there on Maple Street. And when I put out front porch form notices, that you sign up to volunteer your time. Yeah. Because that's the only. She they, wants you to pound nails. We're, we're the only entity besides LHP that does affordable housing right now. Yeah. So. Well, me helping would not be an advantage. Oh, you, <laughs> You, 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 can can bring bring, donuts. you can bring lunch and donuts and coffee. Yeah. All right, so. Paul, you had a you had a comment. I'm Paul Bristol, former member of the planning commission. I want to highlight something that's taking place every day with the planning council and Todd. Every time we have a meeting, he sends out emails to probably to 100. 150 people that have already gone to him that had, and asked him to put their email on that list. So any of you that are not on that list can contact him if you will have that. So you will get pre-notice for every meeting that you have. You will have an agenda sent to you. You will also have the, uh, the minutes of the meetings sent to you afterwards. And that will be inclusive complete everything that you want to know will be there, except if you want to be a part of the discussion, it's best to come to the meetings. Thanks, Paul. Yes. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Todd. 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 And I would just add DRB as well, so you can get the DRB agenda yeah. sent to you too. And I, yeah, I got on that list pretty easily you know, yeah. quite a while ago. Thanks for saying that, Paul. Sharon. Sharon Rowell, so I just, once and for all, just an opinion from somebody on your board. Is there any chance that Brooklyn Street, we're not going to call it a mistake in Fairwood. We're going to call it, I don't know what you want to call it. That had an effect on all these other areas in town. Is there a reversal to that problem? I believe that's what I, the planning council is doing. Yeah, I believe they're working you, on it. You think they're working on a compromise? Another compromise. A compromise. I said 2017-18. Todd's been referring to things as a compromise, not a mistake. Right. 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 All I just want to know is you're confident that they're making an effort 
to yeah. iron this so-called non-mistake correction. That's right. I'm confident they're going to do their due diligence to try to so make this, out a contract. This yeah. group that sits in this room has made so many efforts to be on their agenda, and they've been shot down. There's been no room for them to go there. That's why they're here. We have to talk about that. You know, I, that concerns me quite a bit because I don't see why you can't be on have a community concerns part. The only, part the only way we could be on that to speak at that meeting was if we wanted to talk about the preservation, uh, the historic preservation criteria yeah. to all seven. Now, if we could have wormed our way in to be able to talk about that, mm -hmm. yes, we this group could be included. But mm -hmm. as far as being listed as an actual community concern, Right. It isn't happening. I'll have to check on the state because I know we did when we did this. I know so Sam checked with LCPC. Oh, I have to say this. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to everybody for coming. Thank you. Paul, you have one more? This is an easy way to determine if you can have a low income housing. Yeah. Currently, you have a minimum two acre site for one building. And if you pay a hundred thousand dollars for that two acres, you add another thirty, forty thousand dollars for a sewer line and water, electricity, gravity lines, strength and so forth. And then divide it up by that for the cost of that by the person that's going to occupy that one building. And you've got quite a site of quite a lot of money for monthly in your mortgage. But if you can put ten houses on that ten acres of it, or two acres. Divide that same cost up by 10, you can see where you can get the rent down. And this is what's happening in the village. You get a piece of land and you pay for it, you put 28, 20 apartments on it, you get a sort of bill, it's the same as it is for one building, and the cost goes down a lot for that one person that should occupy that. So it's 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 a cost item. The, I agree with you 100%. In fact, the developer of those Jersey Heights mm -hmm. and the Bridge has admitted to the fact that it's a cost thing. He, he cannot build and make a profit a building for affordable housing. He, he right. cannot do it. Right. And that's that's why he's, he's got to make his normal profit. He's got to make profit. It's going to increase it's the risk. Cash over community is what we're at right now. It's a good thing we have a profit for people who we wouldn't have people. Okay. Not that they can spend All right. people. I'd like to make a motion, we adjourn. <laughs> second. A second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The meeting is done. Thank Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you folks. Thank Sorry you. for making it drag.